Hey guys, my name is Rivan and in this video, I'm going to show you the demo of the Scribble.io clone we are going to develop. If you guys don't know what Scribble.io is, it is basically a multiplayer drawing and guessing game. Player A draws a word given by computer while other players guess and vice versa. Now let me show you the demo of the app we are going to build. So in the starting of the app, we have a main menu using which we can either create rooms or join rooms. I'll create the room from the iOS emulator. Set my name, set my room name, select the max number of rounds and select the maximum occupancy of this room and then click on create. Here we see a waiting lobby. I'll copy the room name from here and join the room from the Chrome. I'll give a name of player C and then enter the room name via the copy paste command and then click on join. After the max number of players has been reached, the game will automatically start. The system will give random adjectives to the player drawing. The drawing can be seen on both the screens, but the player who is guessing cannot draw on the screen. I can guess several words, but only the right word will fetch me the marks. The point system works based on time. Whoever guesses early gets a bigger point. You can even see the leaderboard on the side. Let me guess over here. Now let me finish the game. After the game ends, the winner is decided based on the maximum points in the room. We will be using the Flutter framework which will allow us to create Android, iOS and web UI and Node.js for the backend. So now let's set up our project. I'll just close all of these. And then I'll run the command flutter create scribble and please make sure to use the underscore. After this is done, I'll migrate to my project and then open it in my code editor. Now I'll go in the lib folder main.dart and what I like to do is basically remove all of this code, all of the comments. I'll keep the theme data to blue because that's what the UI of my app is. I'll change the title to scribble clone and then I'll also remove the home and for now I'll just keep it a constant text. I'd also like to remove the banner that comes on the top of the debugging. I'll do that by putting this to false. And now to run the command, first I have to open my iOS simulator, which I'll do by putting in this command. After this is up, I'll just put the flutter run command. I'll wait for it to load up. Initially it will take some time and then it will start running.
now you can see my app has loaded up and now I can see a scribble clone uh, text. So these are the three screens we are going to develop. The home screen, the create room screen and the join room screen. So let's get started. So first of all we will need a home screen file. So I will create home screen dot dart. I will import material package from flutter and then just build a stateful widget. Alright, so the next thing we want is a scaffold and over here we want a column and we want to uh, align all the children of the column center. Alright, so we will do main axis alignment dot center and we also want it cross axis alignment as center. And the children should be a text and the and a row of two widgets. Cool. So we'll just write create or join a room to play. We'll give a style as first of all we'll need a color. So we'll give the color as color dot black. And a font size of 24. Next thing we want is to leave some space and then put a row of buttons. So I'll do size box and we'll leave the height as for responsive uh, design. We are going to use media query. So font text dot size dot height and I'll just multiply it with 0.1% of the total height on the screen. Next thing we want is a row of buttons. So I'll create a row. And over here, we'll put children as first elevated button. Alright, so we'll here put on pressed. For now, we'll just keep it an empty bracket and put the child as. A text and in the text we we'll just put create and put some styling to the text we we'll put the color as color dot black and I'll put a And the next thing we would want is an uh, is another elevated button to uh, show the text join. All right, and then we'll just put a const over here. And then we'll just put a const over here and a const over here. And for formatting, I'll just put commas after the bracket and then just format the document. Over here also, I'll just put a const. Cool. So let's see the UI of our app. Uh, first of all, I'll do this. I'll put the home as the home screen. And then see the output. Okay, we have some output. So first of all, we need to put some styling to the buttons and we need to create a space between uh, e uh, between both of these buttons. So what we'll do is go to the home screen and then in the elevated button we'll put the style. Style as button style. 
and then in the button style we want the background color as a material state property and we'll put the color as color dot blue next thing we want is we want our text to be material property dot all and text type as color and color dot white so we'll remove the style from here and yeah next thing we would want is we would require a minimum height of the button so we'll put minimum size and we'll put material state property dot all and we would give a size of media query dot of context dot size dot width divided by 2.5 and 50 all right so we want the width as the total width of the screen divided by 2.5 and the height as 50 if we see the output now we should get one button like this we'll do the same for the uh, for another button so i'll just copy it and then i'll just paste it over here and first give the style button tag okay we'll also remove the style of colors dot black from over here okay the next thing we want to do is we would like to space them equally so we'll do main axis alignment dot space evenly and we get a good output what i want to do right now is just increase the font size of this so i'll just do so I'll again add a style property over here. Then I'll put font size as let's say 16. I'll just copy it from here and put it over here. Okay, looks good to me now. The next thing we want to do is we want to create a room screen. So what we'll do is go in the tab create underscore room underscore screen dot dot again we'll import the material package over here and then create a stateful widget create room screen cool so again we want to return a scaffold to provide some scaffolding and then we need to put a body as column and then we need to have some children in the column we again want to center all of this so we'll put main axis alignment dot center and then first of all we'll need a text which shows create room and the text should have some styles so we'll put text style And here we'll put color as color. We wanted black. We would need the font size a bit bigger. So we'll put it as let's say 30. Alright. And we'll just put a const over here. Since the text is going to be constant. The next thing we want is. Uh, we want to leave some space. So we'll create sized box. And then put uh, the height as media query dot of context dot size dot height, and we would want it to be 0 0.08 of the total screen. Oh, I made some typo. All right. Next thing we want is a text field that shows us uh, like a text input to enter our name 
and to enter the room name. So what we'll do is put a container over here. Everybody, we will keep a margin of 20. So edge insets dot symmetric horizontal 20. I'll just put a const over here. And then in the child, we need a text uh, field. But the thing is, we're going to use the text field again and again. So what we'll do is, I'll create a widgets folder over here. And in this widgets folder, we are going to have custom text field. So that we can use the widget again and again. And we don't have to declare it again and again. All right. So we'll put material dot again import and then we will just create a stateless widget and we'll put the name as custom text field and we and over here we'll just copy this first of all and then just import import it and then just put const over here all right so now what we want to return is a text field. And in the text field, we would need a controller so that we can uh, get the input whatever the user enters. So I'll just take this text editing controller and it will be first will be the name controller. I'll just mark it as final and over here we'll just put this dot name controller. What are the errors we're getting? Alright. So this can't be a const because the name controller will keep changing. And we'll put a required modifier since we've always wanted. Alright. And over here we'll remove it. We'll fix this error later. Over here, we'll just put the name controller. Now, we want to decorate the input so that it doesn't look very bad. I'll put an input decoration now. And over here, we'll put a border as an outline input border. And we'll put a border radius as I want it circular, so I'll put border radius dot circular and 8. Then I'll put a color to the border, so I'll do border side color and colors dot transparent. We just put a const over here. The next thing we want to do is whenever the user clicks, that means the text field is enabled we want to again give the same uh, outline border so what we'll do is enabled border and we'll copy paste the same thing now we'll put some padding and we'll put the padding as let's say we want horizontal in horizontal direction 16 and in vertical direction 14 And we'll put a const again over here. We want it to be filled. I mean the background color should uh, show something. So we'll fill it. And what the fill color should be is color and 0 x f f f 5 f 6 f 8. You can just copy this and it will give you a color. It is a grayish color which will look good on the white background color. Then we will give a hint text as enter your name. It will be the placeholder tag. So it will give a hint to you that you should enter your name. And the styling of this hint text should be that it should be a text style again. 
and the font size should be 14 and font weight should be font weight dot w400 and we just put a constant over here since the value of the textile never changes all right but see what we want this is a custom text field so we'll have to change the placeholder every time we use it so we'll just put another string over here we'll accept it from the from this screen all right final string and we'll just put hint text sorry hint text and over here we'll again accept it through the constructor required this dot hint text I'll just take this and put it over here. Also over here, it, it isn't necessarily always controller, like the name controller. So we'll just put controller over here and just edit over here. Alright. We'll go over here and we need to pass in two arguments. A hint text and a text, fee, uh, and a text editing controller. So we'll first of all make a text editing controller over here. Final text editing controller. What should be the name of the controller? The first name of the controller is name controller. And we'll just put text editing controller. Alright. Then we'll just pass in the controller as name controller. And what should be the hint text? The first thing is name text. Right. So we'll put enter your name. Now I'll just format this. And then go over here. To see the screen, I'll just add a navigator so that we can just on every create we can just go to another screen so navigator dot of context dot push and over your material page route and builder will pass in one context and we'll just send it to create room screen and it will be a constant I'll just format it again. This is what we have done. Alright. So whenever we click this, we'll be taken to the create room screen. And the create room screen looks just as we want it. We'll do the same again. We'll put we'll copy this container. First of all, we'll just create a size to box so that it leaves some space for us and we'll put in the height as let's say 20 and then just copy this container go to the next slide and then we would want what we want is uh, the user to enter room name so we'll create our own room name controller over here I'll just copy this I'll do room name controller I'll copy this and pass in the room name controller over here and we can just write enter room name alright and then we have it enter room name enter name the next thing we want is the user is for the users to select the max number of rounds from a droppable list and uh, they can select the room size the maximum occupancy in the room again via drop down button so what we'll do is we'll go over here we'll create a sized box leave a height of again 20 for uniformity and then create a drop down button what this drop down button will be of strings all right and then we want 
it to have items as the all the items would be of the type string and then we'll pass in two comma five comma ten comma fifteen. Y'all can change these values as you want and then we'll just map through all of this then after mapping one second after mapping the value we'll get is of type string actually drop down item it would be of type drop down menu item and string sorry my bad we just map through all of this and then the value that we'll receive is string as of type string and then it should return a drop down menu item menu item and the type should be written over here drop down menu item and string and it should return a drop down menu item all right and what should the drop down menu item have it should have a value and the value should be the value that is returned to us via this and the next thing it should have is a child which should be a new text it should have value and the style should be text style colors color and color dot black let me just format it first now we we'll just convert it to a list we we'll convert all the mapped values to a string or uh, to a list sorry to list all right We we'll just put a const to the list. Oh, sorry. We we'll just remove the new tag from here and put a const to the here. All right. To make you understand what I have done is we have given the items as this, the number or like the drop down list as this. Then it will map through all of these values. It will return a new value like two over here, and then it will show it in the text format. Each and every value since we are mapping it. All right. Now let's do some designing on the drop down button. We'll just have a focus color, and we'll give the color as color zero x f f f five f six f eight. The one we had previously used for our text input. Then we'll uh, put a hint. and the hint should be text select max number of round no that will be too wordy we just put select max round and then put the style as text style and the text style should be of color and the color should be color dot black We'll give the font size sixteen or uh, fourteen, sorry, and the font weight a little bit thicker than the previous one. The font weight dot w five hundred. All right, now we want to have 
an on change method like whenever the value is selected by the user we will change the value so we'll do on changed and now if you see over here hover over this and you see that it returns a string to us so what we'll do is basically this we'll get a value and the value will be of string of the type string and then we'll set state and we need to have a global variable where, which we can use later on and then whenever the value changes we will set that value to this value all right so let me create a global variable and i'll put it as string max rounds value I'll copy this also I'll put plate over here and we'll set state to max around value equals to value what is this we getting okay so I'll just put a string we'll put a late string and we'll just put a question mark over here this indicates that the string can be null all right and the max around value will be this all right the next thing we want to do is we need to create another button but first let's see this the output of this and select max around and it works as expected the next thing we want to do is go over here and then after the drop down we'll create a size box of height again 20 and then a drop down button again and the styling would be the same so i'll just copy this whole again we could again use it and uh, we could again put it in the widgets class and create a, a custom size box but I'm not doing that you, you can do the same thing we'll just put the values as 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and then map it all over and then the value should be this the same thing and over here we'll change the hint text to select room size and again for over here we'll do the same thing but we'll create another variable to store this so late string string and we'll put as room size value copy this and put this over here okay now let's see the output okay looks good to me now so the next thing we want to do is to create an uh, okay button like it will uh, redirect us to the main screen the painting screen so I'll just create an elevated button after this but first we'll just leave some space and this time a bigger space so height 40 and we'll put an elevated button we'll keep the on plus button empty for now all right and child should be the child should be a text and the text should have create and the styling would be we would want it to be the color in the text should be white and a bigger little and a little bigger in size so text style color and color dot white and the font size should be 16 sorry 16 and we'll just put a comps to it what is the error we are getting we probably see not given one bracket and then just formatting the document this is what we have 
now to you know uh, style the button we will just put style and button style we can actually copy it from the home screen all of the styling is the same we are going to use we can use this come over here and copy this remove one comma and if we format it let's see what and to see okay looks good all right so this is the ui of the create room screen for the join room screen it will be similar to this but we'll have to remove all these both and the user has to enter a name and enter uh, the room name they want to join and then the uh, create or uh, the join screen button all right so we'll create the join screen we'll import material package again what i'll do is basically copy all of this come over here paste it over here and just change the name join room screen and copy this put it over here put it over here put it over here now we'll remove both of these values because we don't need them uh, we'll change the text to join room we still need the enter your name and enter room name text uh, control uh, text editor like the text input now we'll remove the drop down so let's just remove this i've selected this and then just go down and i'm pressing the shift button and then clicking over here it will select everything and we can just remove it we will also remove the size box what is the error we are having join room screen okay just remove this this was the error we will also remove this these were the errors we just had to we had just put extra screen tags over here we just had to remove the screen all right now we'll go to the uh, home screen we'll copy this navigator code and then just for the same uh, we'll do it over here over here like this and then just put join room screen all right so that whenever we click on this join button it will uh, uh, take us to the join room screen i'll just go over here i'll hot restart and then click on join and here we have it enter your name enter room name this looks very similar to the app we were going to develop over here join and create you need node.js for this uh, if you haven't downloaded you can download it by going on the official website of node.js and click over here the recommended for most users button and then you can download node.js then the next thing is we need to set up mongodb for our project so you can click on new project over here first you had to go to the mongodb website i'll mention the links in the description below after clicking on the create project button you can name your project whatever you want i'll just name it as scribble clone i'll just go with the default options After this is done, we have to clear on uh, click on the build a database method, uh, sorry button, and use the free uh, plan. 
after that we can just click on create cluster you all can see the plans if you all want to after uh, let this run in the background and essentially what we need to do is create a server folder over here and in the server folder first we'll migrate to a server folder and over here we'll click I'll we'll do npm in it and to avoid the you know the, the options that come in we can just do dash y which will mark all of the questions that come in as yes the next thing we want to do is install some dependencies so we'll do npm i we need axios for api requests we need express then we need http mongoose and socket.io after this is downloaded we also need nodemon so that we can continually develop we don't have to uh, keep on refreshing uh, each and every time and we'll add this as a dev dependencies using this and click on enter after this is done you can create an index.js file over here and we can go to the package.json file we'll remove all of the scripts over here and we can just put start which will start with node and index.js file and over here with the dev and this will run with node one don't worry if this doesn't make sense to you i'll show you the demo of both of these in just as uh, in just some time then we need to import all of the dependencies to do that we need to import first express then we need to import http sorry then we need to instantiate the express class and we'll save it in the app variable then we can store the port of our like which port the api request should go and which api uh, which port the website should run So what this line basically does is it will check in the env structure if there is a variable named port if there isn't any uh, variable named port it will take the default value of as 3000 else it will go with the value that was in the variable over here the next thing we want is we will create the server using http.create server and pass in the argument with app then we need to also uh, require mongoose this is for our uh, data modeling then we even need to import socket.io and we'll save socket.io like this We'll, I'll explain this line to you in a bit so what this is is basically we are requiring socket over here we could have done it like this as well like where var socket and then we could have just told var io is equal to socket server this would have worked as well but I'm putting it as a shortcut over here. All right, the next thing we want to do is use the middleware express.json thing. So we'll use the middleware. 
and over your app dot use express dot json so what this basically does is it will uh, return all the values that come to uh, the our server folder and it will before coming before being used by any of the functions that we'll create future in the future it will convert all of them into the json format and then we can use them efficiently and easily the next thing we want to do is now connect to our database So to do that, first we need the database link. So constant DB is equal to, and we can get that over here. So to get the link, we'll just click on the connect button over here. We'll allow access from anywhere. We'll add IP address. We have make sure to you uh, remember the password and the username you'll put in. I'll just type it make sure to remember it it will be very important in the next step we'll click on create database user then choose a connection method and we'll just use connect your application copy this link over here click on the close button i'll not save the password then go over here paste this link now if you see the link carefully you'll see this over here this is our username that we had just created and the password we just typed in. So we can just type it again. And then we need to connect on MongoDB. So we can do that by clicking uh, by using the mongoose. And we have a connect method on the mongoose. So we'll do mongoose.connect and we'll pass in the DB then it will return a promise which we can use with then method then we can just console log and we'll just write connection sorry we'll use the string connection success and after that we'll catch any error if there are any and then log them out as well sorry the next thing we want to do is listen to the request and basically start the server we'll do that by server.listen port and we'll are access we are allowing access from all the ip addresses so we'll put 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0 and we'll use the callback method function over here and put console.log server started and running on port and we'll just part in or pass in port over here so this should work now i had to show you the difference i'll just clear this first now showing you the difference between uh, npm start and npm run dev basically both of this it's the it's that if i run npm start one second we have uh, an error over here we just pass in four and then we'll just press enter server started and running on port 3000 and our connection is successful all right so this is it but the difference is that now suppose i make some changes over here i remove this and and just put it like this now it hasn't caught any changes we have made over here yet so to do that we need to close this then run it again and now it has captured all the changes we have made so to avoid that we use npm run dev which is basically node mon and now if we make any changes like this it listens to the changes 
and start the server automatically. Cool. So this is our. Uh, so we have successfully connected uh, our back into our. Uh, So we have successfully run our backend. Uh, we'll need to uh, install a Flutter package named fl socket dot socket underscore io underscore client. There are multiple packages in Flutter that can support this, but I'm going to go with this because it's pretty easy to use. So to do this, I'll go in the installing tab. I'll just copy this from here. I'll go in my pubspec.yaml file and paste it in the dependencies and save. It will install automatically for us and for this to affect our application, we'll have to restart the app. I'll just restart this run without debugging. Now we'll also need to migrate to a server folder and here we'll need to start our server. Start this and the connection is successful. So the next thing we want to do is we need to create the paint screen where we can connect our Node.js. This is the screen where all the painting and everything will basically happen, the main uh, functionality of this app. So I'll create a stateful widget over here, name it paint screen and here I'll import the material dot package. All right. The next thing we want to do is create the init state method. I'm not sure why that isn't written out. Init state. Yeah. And over here, we'll need to call the connect method. And we'll create a connect method which will basically return nothing. It's for our socket IO client connection. We'll just write over here socket IO. And first, we'll need to initialize our socket IO package. Uh, so, we'll create an object by late. First, we'll import it socket underscore IO. We'll import it as IO so that no confusions happen with the dot IO package. And we'll name it loyally IO dot socket. Socket is the name io dot socket underscore socket yeah and we'll take the socket object and we'll initialize it over here socket is equal to io dot io which will basically help us con uh, connect and we'll pa we'll need to pass in a URL and the URL will be http colon slash slash and if you go to the index.js file, you'll see that a server will run on any IP address. So you can pass in your IP address over here. So to find my IP address, what I'll do is go in my terminal, type if config and over here in the EN0 in inet, I'll find my IP address. and since the socket is running on port 3000, as you can see over here, we'll put colon 3000 and we'll pass in some extra arguments. You can find them easily on uh, their uh, or document in their documentation in the readme as well. You can just grab it from there and we'll turn the auto connect to false. Now we'll tell our socket to connect to the URL and we'll listen to our socket any uh, request we send or re uh, receive so the receiving part will be done over here so we'll just put socket dot on connect we'll get some data 
I'll turn this arrow function into a normal function since we'll have to use this function a lot and we'll just print the data that we receive over here. All right. Now this will probably not run on our app. I'll tell you the reason why. Let's just see. I'll go in the debug console and first we need to import this on our main.dart file. For now, let's just remove the home screen and put in paint screen over here. I'll save it and hot restart. And we don't see anything. The reason is that because uh, the min many packages in Flutter which are related to socket IO cannot connect to the node.js socket.io uh, package over here. So to make this work, we'll have to downgrade our socket.io from 4.3.1 to a to a downer version. I mean, so we'll just convert. Uh, we'll just change this to 2.3.0. To do this, we'll go in the terminal. We'll stop this, and we'll put npm uninstall socket.io, and then run npm i socket.io with version 2.3.0 and we'll run our server again. Now we'll go to our debug console and hot reload our app and we see no data is given out. If we see over here print connected and hot reload our app, we'll see connected. So this are successfully connected. In the next video, we'll work on the join screen and the uh, create screen functionality uh, and going into creating rooms and everything. Now, uh, before ending this video, I'll tell you why uh, we created and connected our socket over here instead of the create and uh, join room screen. The reason is that we could have obviously implemented a uh, singleton classes or uh, use simple dependency injection package which I'm not doing in this video, we'll save it for another video and another series on that. We're going to develop the backend side and run the create room screen. We'll basically create room. So uh, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is uh, navigate uh, create room screen. So first what we're going to do is just convert this home screen. And after so basically what we want to do is after we click on this create button we'll go to the paint screen and in the paint screen there will be validations happening uh, which uh, will be sent to the node.js uh, backend that we've created and it will create the room in the mongodb database all right if it's not clear stay with me till the end and we will understand this so we'll just go to the create room screen and in the function on press the create function we just call create room and we'll just go and create the function over here and we'll just run create now what we want to do is navigate uh, so before navigating we want to check certain things we want to do our validations right so we want to do is We'll check if the name controller is empty. This field is empty or not. And we obviously want to check for the room name controller as well. So we'll do room name controller dot text and we'll check. And we also want to see if both of these things are not null, which they are right now. So what we'll do is underscore max arounds value is not equal to null i mean yeah okay so we want to check if they are not empty and we want to check if they are not null as well is not equal to null and we'll run our function let me just format the document once and now uh, what we're going to do is push all of this data to the paint screen. So what we're going to do is create a map. 
which are basically objects in JavaScript. And we'll just pass in this stuff. Nickname and our nickname is going to be this. I'm sorry. This. The room name. Let's just keep it name. And our name is going to be the room name controller dot text. Our occupancy is going to be the max rounds value and the max number of rounds is going to be the room size value and we'll just pass it through navigator navigator dot of context and see we don't have to pass in context over here as a, a parameter over here because the state has a context object already which is this which we are using over here all right and now we'll just push material page route and we'll get a context over here we we'll just navigate to the paint screen and we'll pass it to the paint screen some data and data and we also need to check if it's coming from this screen that is the create room screen or the join room screen right so we we'll just pass in a parameter of screen from which is create room and we are just passing this over. all right now we'll go to the paint paint screen and here we are going to accept all of this let me just remove this constructor and in the paint screen we are going to take in the data final map data and final string screen from and we'll initialize our constructor over here mark both of them as required this dot data required this stuff screen all right now let's see why we are getting the error over here paint screen I'm not sure why i'm getting the error over here the method paint screen isn't defined for the type create to screen state context and we return the widget up here that's all okay so we have not imported the paint screen i thought we had imported it already let's just import the paint screen dot dot um i don't like the importing that is done like this so i'll just do import dot slash and paint screen dot dot the relative importing all right now let's just restart and see if we're getting any error. No, we're not. So now if we go to the paint screen and console, let's just log it over here. Uh, I mean, print it over here. And let's just print the data, which we can do using widget dot data. Let's see if we're getting this. So let me just type my name, type a room name, room one. Select my number of rounds and select the room size, and we are getting nickname the one, name room one, of course two, and maximum is two. Great. So the next thing we want to do is pass the data from the paint screen that we receive over here, and just. So whatever data we received over here, we need to pass it to our Node.js uh, backend 
So we'll do that. So first thing we want to do is basically before after connecting itself, we'll just put if widget dot screen from is equal equal let's just do e equal equal and if it's create room then we will emit socket we have underscore over here socket dot emit which will emit the data and it takes in two uh, arguments the one is basically the name of the argument like the name of the command so we just put create game and the other one is a data we want to pass to the node.js so we do widget dot data all right the next thing would be we can we'll put the else condition which is the join room condition in the next video when we we'll touch the join room uh, feature now the next thing we want to do is go to the index we'll just save this and go to the index.js file in the server folder and after going over there we basically need to initialize the socket.io by here so how we can do this is io dot on connect dot io dot on sorry io dot on connection which will give us the socket object and we'll just put first of all connected to see if it's we are connected or not and the second thing will be to maybe let's just or create game so we do socket dot on create j and, and it will be an asynchronous process since we are going to deal with mongodb and the database and everything so let's just get nickname name occupancy and max rounds we are uh, basically uh, removing everything from the objects with the shortcut syntax in javascript and we we'll just put the try and catch block over here in case of any error we'll just probably emit some data we'll do it later and now we need to create some models so the first thing we need to do is go to the server folder and create a folder named models and over here room.js this is a great thing with a uh, mongoose we we can model and uh, play with our data quite easily so what we're going to do is import mongoose which is equal to require mongoose and the next thing we would need is let's just first create the room schema and we can do that in mongoose.schema and there will be uh, many factors in the room schema what room schema is basically uh, it's like a collection uh, suppose we have a lot of data like room rooms and the rooms will have certain id and within that id will be after that id the id will have this the fields like room name then uh the word that is going on like scribble io has the word the guessing word the word it will have then the occupancy then the max number of rounds and it will be for each and every id the rooms generate that uh, multiple players can play at the same time in the room so there are ids and it will be in the json format since uh, it's mongodb all right so we just create the fields and 
we just type in word which is required and the type will be string. The next thing will be name and name will be required as well. Type will be again string and it will be a unique name since we are going to identify your user mainly based on that name and we want no two users with the same name and we are also going to trim the name so we are going to trim this we are not trimming the word since we know that it's like the word we are going to fetch from an API will never have a word which will end with spaces you can still do it though if you want and then we can have occupancy it will be required type will be number and it will de default to 4 like the if no occupancy in case it's not given there's an error or something we just default it to 4 occupancy then the max rounds and the type will be of number we also need to keep track of the current round the round that is the round number that is going on and it will be required and the type will be number and it will default to one sorry just normal now we need players the players we need player schema like the object that is defined for players how the player model should look so we'll just pass in player schema for now we'll create it in a while and we'll put is join and is join will be of type boolean either true or false and the default will be true. We'll set is join to false after all the players have joined in and the game has started. The turn will be the player schema, the, uh, the turn that is going on, and the turn index will be type number and default to C. Now we need to create a player model. So we'll create a player model as well. Over here again we need to import mongoose. So we'll import it. Alright, now we need to create a player schema. Schema. and the nickname there will be a nickname and the nickname will be of type string and the trim will be true and the, because of this option we in the uh, over here sorry in the player tune screen we had not put a room name uh, controller dot text dot trim uh, it's uh, on the server side that we'll trim it all right you can still do it over there and remove it from here but i like to do it this way now we need to put pass the socket id that the socket will itself give us and we need to check if the player is the party leader if the it, it is a party leader then we will give them some special options or you can just modify the project and add some more features of their party leader and give them some extra features that they can start on end the meeting end the room or something up to your creator now we need points and the points will be of type number and it will be default to zero. Now we'll just export this. So first we'll create the player model. And we'll create this using model. 
the name will be player and we will pass in player schema. It's using this name that we'll have to import it in the room.js file and we'll just export audio.export and we'll just pass in both of these the player model and the player scheme. Now we'll go to our room.js file and here we'll import player schema. We are using this since we have exported them as an object over here. So we are just deobjectifying if that's a word and uh, we just require it. And we require dot player. And we just const game model and we pass in numbers dot model room and pass in room schema and uh, after this is done, we'll go to our index.js file again. All right, and now we'll just check const. Now we'll check for if there's an existing room already created or not. And now we room. We'll need to import the room first. So we'll just room. I think we need to import this first of all const room is equal to require dot slash model slash room room dot find one with the name we will find the room with its name and we will check if the room is existing like if the room exists then we'll emit some data socket dot emit not correct game so this emit will go to our client side and it will say room with that name already exists all right now we'll just return as well so that we get out of this uh, socket on create game and all of this function it's probably all that now let's create a room if if the room exists or if the room does not exist with this name then we'll create a new room we need to create a word as well but um okay let's do it so we need to create a word as well and the word will be from a github link that i'll mention below and let's get the word and to get the word we'll we are going to use that in a different folder and let's create a folder api over here and let's just put get word dot dot i mean sorry dot j and uh, to generate the word we are going to use uh, 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 a link that I'll mention over here it has almost over 1000 adjectives that it can choose from uh, so we need to randomize that now to do that we can just go over here type in https slash slash github.com slash slash quadro over here you go in the server folder in the api in the generate word and get all of this the constant get word it has all over thousand adjectives you can just copy them and use them over here all right 
now i'll explain to you what the last time means so these are all the adjectives which the uh, game will randomize every time and we'll use that so what this does is basically returns uh, this is an adjectives array it will randomize uh, from 1 to 1000 it will uh, so what this does is basically this is an array right now it will uh, it will uh, take a random value and it will multiply itself with the adjectives length suppose the uh, length of this array is 1000 so it will uh, take a random number suppose it's 1 and it will multiply with 1000 and it will give uh, the thousandth adjective in this array and uh, math.random usually takes a number between 0 and 1 if you see over here it returns a pseudo random number between 0 and 1 so it can be 0 0.2 and the length will be 1000 so 0 0.2 into 1000 which will give us 200 I hope I'm right with my calculation <laughs> now uh, let's just import it over here get word is equal to require dot slash api slash and get word and now uh, we are going to go in the uh, in the index.js file again here we are and we set our row which is over your room and we set our room to room dot word equal to word this word room dot name equal to this name room dot occupancy equal to the occupancy basically all of this stuff room dot max rounds which is equal to max rounds and we'll create a player model as well like the player schema and it will be an object and we'll pass in socket id make sure the car the, the case sensitivity is there like you can see over your player.js and you can see socket id copy them correctly socket id and pass in socket dot id the the socket that we receive over here its id then the nickname and we'll set the party leader to true the party leader will be true because it's create game right so whoever creates it is the party leader and we'll pass in room dot players dot push the players will be an array so we'll push it and we'll take this player and push them. and we'll just do room is equal to await room dot c since it's a promise and we'll obviously join the socket socket dot join to the room right so we'll join the socket to this room and uh, we can just pass in to the name so we need to pass in to the room basically uh, with this name like so what we are going to do is we are going to send a, me send a message to everyone in this room with uh, the socket uh, in this room and uh, we are going to send them a message that a new player has arrived and we just update the room and we'll pass in room data this data that we had saved over here we'll pass it and we'll just console.log the error right looks good now uh, we'll go to our paint screen Okay, I think everything is done. We just have to run our app. Right? Let's do it. 
okay okay wait 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 we had to do something socket dot on connect and on connect we need to uh check in the on connect we need to update all the data so let's just keep it over here and we'll check if socket dot on update room and room data we set the state to the data so let's just create some variables over here so what we need to do is create a string data of room let's just keep it yeah data of room Write a weird name. You can take any you want. Data of room, and we set it to room data that we receive. So this room data is this room data we are getting over here. So we are passing this room over here, and we are getting this data of room over here. All right. We just set the state over here. So that the UI also changes automatically. And now we need to check if the room data and add is joined. Like we need to check if the Boolean value is not true. So to do that, we do is not equal to true. Or you can just put an exclamation mark over here and remove everything. And so, if it's not true, then we have to start the timer as well. So we'll just start the time. We'll just put the comment and do it in another video. Now we also need to. Yeah, that is it. This is all we have to do. And yeah, now we can just make this a scaffold first of all body and put a container over here yeah now we won't get that black screen instead we'll get a white screen right so now let's refresh and test it out create new and we'll go enter your name the one room one max number of rounds two room size two Create. Okay. Now we can just go to our Mongo DB collection and we'll refresh our app. We should see a collection over here. And here it is. Rooms. This is a player's room as well. There is no data over here. And this is it. Occupancy 2, current round 1, is joined true, turn in at 0, player, player at 0 position, nickname I had passed in Rivan, and everything seems to be working. Great. So in the next video, uh, okay, we'll just check one more thing. Now we'll try to join again with Rivan 1 to the user, and it will create. Now let's just see if it has passed in uh, to our array another player or not. It should have. It shouldn't have, and it hasn't. Since uh, the user, uh, since the room was already created with this name, it has passed in uh, an error over here. We are going to work on the join room screen. Try to join the room, and we'll add the players in this array. All right. So now we'll go in the uh, join room screen uh, class and over here in on pressed we'll replace this with join room we'll create this function void join room and over here first uh, we have to check if uh, one second i'll just show you yeah we have to check if this and this is empty or not so to do this we'll just do if name controller dot text dot 
is not empty if they are not empty we'll perform our work else we'll just give them a message right so and if they are not empty what we want to do is we have to create a map of the data that we are going to send to them uh, to the paint screen like we did uh, with the create room screen so now we'll pass in the nickname and the nickname was this i'll just copy this from here our name was uh the room name and the room name will be this room name controller dot text and now and now we will uh, navigate to another screen and we'll push that to the uh, paint screen right so we'll do this material page route we'll get in a context over here and then we'll just push that to the paint screen and paint screen requires two arguments first is the data that we created over here and the screen from over here we'll write join room and after that we just put a semicolon i'll just format this cool so now we'll go to the paint screen tab sorry we'll go to the paint screen tab uh class and over here below this if widget dot screen from is create room if it's not then we'll emit the if uh if it's not then we'll just emit uh let's say join game and we'll pass in widget dot data right so now we'll save it and we'll go to the index.js file over here what we need to do is create another socket dot uh, this callback so we'll do socket dot on let's actually put some comments over here a uh, create game callback and this will be join game callback and over here socket dot on and we need to copy this from your join game i'll just copy it and we'll again get uh an asynchronous function since uh, we are going to make a function request to uh, mongodb and over here we'll get a nickname and a name i'll just take this and return now call yeah so now uh, we'll just put try and catch block over here so that if any exceptions come in we can just console log it these would be the errors from say mongodb or something right so now we'll just create an instance of the room and the room we need to find uh, the room right so that we can join in that room so we'll just find the room and we'll find one by its name after finding it from the name we have to check if the room exists or not so if the room doesn't exist we'll just emit to the client that the uh, that the room doesn't exist so that means the user has to enter a uh, a, a room name uh, that exists so we'll just pass in the not correct game over here so that we don't have to create extra extra functions in the client side and we'll pass in the data uh, like the warning or error message and we'll just write here please enter a valid room name after doing this we'll just return from this so that it doesn't execute further now we have to check if this is join which we'll update uh, later on when we start the game and everything so for now we just have to check if is join is not false so that means we have to check if the room 
has a property is join which is true so we'll do if room dot is join which means if the room is available so that the player can join so we just put player is equal to and we'll pass in the socket id obviously and we'll get that by socket dot id and we'll pass in a nickname after creating this we need to pass in this player to the uh, player's array that we created over here so we'll just put room dot players dot push and we'll push in this player yeah after that we need to uh, make our socket join in that room so that we can send messages only in the room so we'll do socket dot join and we'll pass in the name all right the socket will join in the name uh, similar to this where the socket joins the room cool so we had made an error in the previous time we made the socket join in this room which is an object we don't want to uh, make it make it join in the room we actually want to make it uh, go in the name so we will do socket dot join name which name we are getting from your the parameter similarly over here we have done socket dot join name this was an error from the previous video really sorry so the next thing we want to do is now we want to check if the uh, players dot length i mean the array length over here is equal to the occupancy over here if that is true the join is join boolean will set to false right because the maximum capacity has been reached and then we have to start the game right so now we'll just put an if condition if room dot players dot length which is this array and its length is equal 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 to room dot occupancy then we'll turn room dot is join to false and then we'll turn room dot turn and it will be equal to room dot players and room dot turn index so what this line basically does is we have a turn field over here right a turn index field over here so now what this will do is create room dot turn and it will uh, it will create uh, the turn field over here and in this field it will uh, set the turn the current turn that is going on in the game to the turn index which will be zero when the, the second user joins in and when the third user joins in the turn index will turn to 2 i hope you've understood that if not you can just comment down below and i'll help you and i'll explain to you again now we'll just save the room again and after that we'll just uh, emit to the users in the room so io.2 name so this is basically called broadcasting uh, sorry this is not broadcasting basically this will send uh, the message whatever you emit over here to the uh, players in the room to the sockets uh, in the room i'll explain it to you after typing this and room right so what this basically does is uh, we have made our sockets join so socket dot join over here socket dot join over here so basically the socket uh, will join in the room uh, consider a socket joins a room then another uh, socket joins a room then it will send this data only to the sockets that have joined in the room so using this we can just send this to the people who are in the room uh, all right then we'll if the room is not joined like if the condition is set to false that means occupancy has been reached or the game has started so now we'll put an else condition and in the else condition we can just copy this from here 
we'll paste that paste it over here not correct game and we can just write to the user that the game is in progress please try later all right now that's it if you want you can just convert it to string i don't find it very useful to convert it to string anything all right so now uh, the join game functionality has been done we can just test it we rerun our app node is running all right so now uh, our app is loaded over here now we can join the room and we'll just copy the room name from your from our database and the room name was room 1 we'll just copy it from here and enter your name i'll just type in namun and i'll paste the room name over here i don't know why i can't paste it okay yeah and then we'll uh we have to change this text by the way let's do it right away too many bugs in the app <laughs> now we can just change it to join right now we click on join button we've got an error over here okay so in the app over here where's the join to screen we've got the data over here that seems to be a problem with this data Okay so let's just change this from string to a string Okay and we'll go over here and the map is string and string We'll do the same over here Okay data and string and max round value we we'll just put an exclamation mark over here and an exclamation mark over here so what we've basically done over here is we have converted we have told flutter that uh, my data is of the type string comma string so this data over here is a string and this is a string over here and over here this is a string and this is a string and with the exclamation mark here we have uh, we have initialized it late so the max rounds value can be null and flutter doesn't know that the value over here can never be null right so uh but since we are checking over here so we are telling flutter that this value can never be null so we've put an exclamation mark over here saying that all right now we'll run the app again and we'll wait we'll just put join i'll put my name naman over here and i'll paste room 1 over here. join no issues let's just re refresh this page we'll go to the players and we see another player over here num socket id this and we should also see that our is join has changed to false from true since the occupancy was 2 over here and the players are a consists of two players so now the game can start we are basically going to have the screen and we are uh, going to add the details so that we can draw on the screen so uh, let's get started so uh, before uh, getting started first i want to rectify my mistake over here here the data of room shouldn't be a string it should actually be a map I so let's just uh, convert it into a map and now over here we are setting this room data which we are getting as an object over here in the index.js we are going to set this to data of room now let's just save it now uh, let's work on the ui part of the screen so uh, let's get started so the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, show a stack in a scaffold so we'll just put a stack 
and after putting a stack we need children inside it and the children would be first of all a column we're going to have multiple uh, uh element uh, multiple widgets in this stack and uh, we're first going to have suppose this is the screen let's me let me just show you let's just create a room i'll put in my name i'll put in the room name as my name and selecting the room size we'll click on create so the thing we want to do is this part should be our paint screen over here we'll have some buttons so that we can change the color we can change the thickness of the brush and etc here we should get a display of the messages and over here we should get an input so for that to achieve first we need to put in a scaffold a stack and after in the stack we just want to put a column and the column should be centered so we'll just put cross axis alignment to center and it should start from right from the top from over here so what we're going to do is put main axis alignment to start as well the next thing we want to do is have some children inside the column the children should be first of all a container and this is the uh, widget where we are going to draw so this is a parent widget actually now the width should be uh, the whole uh, the whole width of this device what uh, we are going to use the width multiple times so i'm just going to create a, a variable which holds this value and the value will be media query dot of context dot size dot width we'll do the same for height as well let me just copy this and paste it over here and i'll rename this to height and here it will be height as well so we have width and height the width of the container should be the whole width and height as we discussed earlier should be this part and only so we'll just put height to let's say 0.55 times the whole height so this would be one times the whole height 0.55 will be a little bigger than half the size height of the device the next thing we want is we want to have a child and the child should be a gesture detector in the gesture detector we'll have a uh, we'll have three functions actually uh, they'll be on pan update we'll discuss about this in a in some time after creating the ui on on pan update we'll get uh, details i'll explain all of this stuff to you later then the next method will be on pan start this will be details as well. this will receive details as well and then just and the last will be on pan end and the on pan end will have details as well then we need to have a child and the child will be clip wrecked but it should achieve the maximum possible size that it can take so we'll just wrap it with sized box dot expand and then uh, we'll have child as clip rect clip rect this will create a box and then it should have a border radius of 20 so to do that we we'll just do border radius dot all radius dot circular 20 then the next thing we want to do is have a child and this is your uh, this is where it gets interesting so we want to the child should uh, to be repaint boundary this is where we can uh, uh, paint all of the stuff this was just to give them uh, the size and the height and everything and uh, here is where we we'll, uh, have our canvas where we can draw and it should have a child and the child should be a custom paint the custom paint should have a, a size and the size should be infinite and it should have a painter this painter will be a class we'll create let's just name it my custom painter 
and it will receive a list of points which we'll create up here now for now we'll just keep it empty list of points will be empty and we'll uh, mention the type of this like the generic type of this uh, later when we go ahead for now let's just pass in points list and we'll pass in this points now we have to create this class and to create this class we need uh, a folder we'll call it models and over here we'll call it my custom painter dot dot all right so now we have the custom painter uh, file now we need to uh, create the class so to create the class let's just first import the material package from flutter and we'll import dart ui and we'll rename the, we'll use this as ui so that there's no confusion then we'll create a class class my custom painter extends and it should extend this custom painter so this will take in all the properties of this uh, then uh, we need to create a constructor and the constructor will have a points list this points list will be a list of points list now to create the list of points list what we want to do is we should have a points list that uh, contains the position of the points in the x direction in the y direction and uh, for that we'll just create another model that will be touch point so it will store in the color and properties of the paint and the direction of the points so to do that we'll just create another class touch points dot dart we'll import the material package then we'll call class touch touch points and first of all it should have a paint paint and it should have offset of points like the location of the points then this touch points constructor this dot points this dot paint and we'll have to mark this as required the next thing we want to do is create a json function so we'll have map string comma dynamic and a two json function which will create this into a json format and we'll return point and this point will have dx which will be direction in the x or direction and uh, we'll use dollar points dot dx then we'll have a dy direction dy and over here we'll just pass in points dot dy we'll return this so what this is basically a string interpolation so we are converting points dot dx which will be a double value and we'll convert this into uh you know uh, a string value the next thing we want to do is over your list of touch point and here we'll just mark it as required all right so the next thing we want to do is um create a list of offset points so we'll do list of offset offset points and it will be an empty for uh, empty offset list points for now then we'll just pass in, we'll just create uh so after extending the custom painter as i said it inherits some of the functions of this class so we're just going to create those functions so my custom painter if we go over here if you're in visual studio code and press command and full stop it will have this option create two missing overrides 
So click over here and it will create these two functions for you. If you're on Android Studio, you'll have an, a bell or an alarm icon uh, in the corner and you can just click over there and you'll get these options as well. Now over here, we want to implement the painting functionality. It gives us a canvas where we can draw and a size. So we'll just do paint and the background color uh, should be paint dot dot color and it should be white color so it will be colors dot white notice to put two full stops over here one will stop one draw then we'll have to create a rect and the rect will be rect dot from ltwh which means loft, left top with height so now uh, from the left it should be zero from the top it should be zero uh, which should be size this over here we got and width and height should similar be size dot height after that we will just draw canvas dot draw rect and the rect should have a rect and here it should have a background The next thing we want to do is draw clip rect. Oh, that's not the function. It will be clip rect. This. And it should take, we'll pass in the rect. After that, we need to uh, put in the logic for the points uh, so that it displays on the screen like the, we'll just type right in logic for points. If there is a full stop, we need to pass in full stop. We need to just display full stop. Sorry. We need to display full stop. And if there is line, if there is line, which is basically a set of full stops, if there is line, we need to connect the full stops. Uh, I should stop saying full stop and instead say points. If there is a line, we need to connect the points, right? Line is basically uh, a set of points which are in a straight line. I mean, in a linear path. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, the code will make sense to you. We'll just put in a for loop so that we can iterate through the points list. The uh, array over here we have and the points list will be uh, we'll start from zero and run till points list dot length and I should increment actually it should run till uh, length minus one my bad after that uh, we want to check if points list at i is not equal to null and the next point in the uh, array is not null as well so we'll just copy this i plus one is not equal to null then we need to execute something and what we want to do is if they are not null then means uh, that means that we uh, want to draw a line because the, the two values are present so that means there are two points and the two points need to be connected via line. So we'll do canvas dot draw line and uh, the lines should be points list at i dot points. Then this point two will be points list and you might have guessed it i plus one dot points and the paint should be the points list at i dot paint you notice in over here we'll just save this so we you notice over here we have a paint object and this is the paint object we are going to uh, pass in over here right after this we'll just put in an else con else is condition as if This is not null, right? 
this shouldn't be null and this should be null so we'll just put in equal equal to null that means this is a point so there is just a point and uh, if there's suppose we create a dot over here we'll just put in a point over here and uh, so if we put in a point the points list will contain of the dot right and it will not contain a next point because you have not created another point right so this will not be null and this will be null which means this is a point so we'll just put in a, some comments over here this is a point and over here we'll just put in this is a line right now we'll just do we'll first of all create uh, clear all the offset points if that is uh, created first then we need to add in some offset points and the offset points might be as you have guessed points list at i dot points then uh, we need to add in offset points dot add and over here we'll add in offset we have to create an offset of points over here and the offset will take in dx and I dy so we'll just copy this from your points list to, uh, dot points and over here dot points dot dx plus 0 0.1 after that we'll just take this and we'll pass in this over here and we, this will be dy and we put in a semicolon so now we'll just draw the points canvas dot draw point and the points will be ui the ui class that we created over here this ui dot point mode dot points and the points you're going to pass in is offset points and this should be points list at i dot paint right so this will create uh, this will draw points for us and uh, I'll I'll make you understand this in a better way when we start to work on the over here in this functionality. We'll just log out the values and then you'll understand it far more better. Now we'll just save this and now we'll just go to the repaint method. We'll just remove everything and it should always return true. And we put in a semicolon. Cool, now we have saved it. Now we'll go in the paint screen folder. We'll import this. And this is where we'll import. Now points list should be points list. And we'll pass in points. Now the list, as I said before, list should be a list of touch points. We'll pass in the generic function. Right. Now touch points what is that are we getting the name touch points isn't a type okay we'll just have to import this and after importing this we are good to go okay so the next thing we want to work on is first of all uh, we shouldn't see any difference over here right because we have just created a white background so it wouldn't reflect as such um so the next thing we want to do is work on these functions over here on pan update on pan start on pan end so what on pan start does is over here on pan start uh, it basically means that the gesture detector this widget has detected that your screen suppose i touch it over here so now the screen has gotten to know that you have touched the screen. I mean, we get to know that the screen has been touched. And uh, so why don't we use on tap instead, right? So this will basically uh, be, uh, you know, uh, for like a long press as well. See, if we do on tap, it will just check for one tap. But 
when there is on long tap on second tap everything for that there is on pan start so this see this over here a pointer has connected the contacted the screen and has begun to move right so this is uh, is the function and on pan start so what we are going to do is emit to the socket we are going to say, uh, emit this to a server that this should be underscore socket dot emit and we want to just emit these details to the server and after over here in the server in the index.js file over here after emitting to the server over here we'll just emit it back to everyone in the room right yeah if it doesn't make any sense now it will when the we get to the coding part over there for now we'll just emit paint and we'll pass in first of all details and one second detail and the details will be dx obviously then it will be dy and uh, outside of this object of details we want to pass in room name right and the, what will be the room name uh, we are accepting this from the use uh, from the other you know the screen data so this will be widget dot data and it was named as name so we just pass in name the dy will be details this details over here we get and it's local position so details has global position as well but global position is for the entire screen like the entire full screen and a uh, local position is just for the it just considers its parent element and our parent element is container now right if uh, you have any doubts related to this you can ask in the comments and the details local position will be dy similarly for dx details dot local position dot dx and we'll just pass in this way we'll save it and now as uh, if you want to you know know what the details we are getting is we'll just print them not log it print details dot local position pros probably we're going to get a map if we do local position so we'll just pass in dx now add yeah see we get the location over here 114 this now we do multiple over here and just do this over here we get a list of this but you see we are getting just five points over here we shouldn't be getting just five points right since we we are constantly going over the screen the reason is that this is an on pan start so it just uh, sees if the uh, connection has been started like the pointer has touched so it doesn't care about other functionalities we do what will care is this on pan update so in the on pan update we'll just do this similarly so let's just copy this entire thing just paste it over here um and this is pretty much it and we just send now see over here after reloaded now we are doing this we are getting four right now we we'll do this we're still getting four because on pan update it also needs an on pan end so uh, we are just continuously streaming but we want to, uh, to even know when it ends and if it ends then we have to send it so we we'll do the same thing over here not the same thing as this but the logic will be same we are going to emit and the emit will be paint and the paint will pass in details but this details will be null because the pan has ended the user interaction for a second even has stopped so this will be details null and we'll pass in the room name okay wait this will be an object right details room and room will be room name sorry and it will be widget dot data name 
okay now we are just going to emit this now if we do this um we should also log this uh print this sorry um it's not getting the local position okay yeah details doesn't have the local position map over here all right so now we have done our part uh also you can see over here that this part the container part over here is pure white and this is somewhat grayish if you can't see trust me <laughs> i can see this this is a uh, pure white and this is somewhat gray and whitish so we'll just go on the scaffold over here and we'll just pass in background color as colors dot white and this will be white fully all right so the next thing we want to do is go in the index.js the server file or the server file right and in the server file we just have to listen to the request that we created let's just close all the tabs and go in the index.js file in the index.js file we'll just listen to the this is the join game and after this join game we'll just create the paint one so it will be this will be whiteboard sockets and we'll just pass in socket dot on and we had created a request named paint I'll go back in the uh, class and you'll find it and we are receiving two arguments one is details and one is room name we are deobjectifying this and over here we'll just pass in to everyone and everyone in the room so we'll just take this io.2 room name dot emit and we're going to emit some points and the points will be details and details actually you can just do details as well but i'm going to go with this details all right so after this is done uh, we can just go back to our main dot dot file this was it for the index.js file i mean sorry not the main dot dot file paint screen dot dot and over here we have to listen to our paint screen right over here we have to listen to the over here we have sent a uh, we have requ uh, sent a request to the client side and over here we have to listen to this request so we'll do socket dot on and it will be points and we'll receive in one argument point and we we'll just put a send point first and over here we want to check if point and the point details the details we have if the point details is not equal to null then what we want to do is set the state to you might have guessed the points that we had created the points list on the top we want to add them and what we want to add is a touch point and the touch points will have points and the points will be an offset points right so we'll just create an offset over here and the offset will be point the direct the points in the you know the point details in the dx direction and it doesn't know that dx will be double as we have converted into string afterwards so we'll just do dot to double not after this but after this um i think we've made a mistake over here yeah we'll just remove this we'll just cover this with the bracket and after this we'll pass in dot to double and after this is done myself confused with the point system i don't know 
Okay, let's just remove everything. I'm myself confused with the off points, the brackets. So the offset will be a uh, points details, not points. Sorry, point details, and it will be dx, and we'll get out of this bracket and convert this to double. After converting to the double, we'll have another thing similar to this we'll just grab this passing this over here and it will be dy all right now the paint paint is going to be a cool one so this will be taking a paint functional in the paint object we'll just pass in let me just format this first of all so that you can see it clearly this is format this let's put in semicolon format document ah yeah so we have a paint functionality over here so the paint and it will be dot dot stroke cap and the stroke cap will be of the stroke type that we are going to create later on so for now let's just pass in you know stroke type uh, will be stroke cap dot round but let's just create a variable for that yeah so we'll just pass in stroke cap and it will be stroke type and stroke type will be stroke cap dot raw we are also going to have a functionality of right let's just convert this stroke type all right the next thing we want to add is uh, we'll just go back over here then we want to add in dot we'll do over here dot dot is anti-alias and we'll just pass in true then we pass in color and the color will be we're going to have the option of color right so for now let's just create another variable color and it will be selected color and for default will be colors dot black selected color selected color and we'll pass in opacity as well and with opacity and the opacity variable we'll have to create opacity opacity and it will be clearly visible so it will be one um sorry this will take in uh, this won't take in int it will actually take in um it should be double opacity sorry opacity and dot with opacity opacity okay and we have to remove this comma after that uh, what we need to do is pass in the stroke width and the stroke width will again be a stroke width variable now we we'll just pass in stroke width and a stroke width again will be uh, a double and we'll just pass in two the default value can give anything you want i'll just pass in two and yeah this is pretty much it with the configurations so we have added the points list uh we have added a point to the points list that whatever we get okay so let's try and run our app okay so let's run so now uh, after saving it we should see that the app runs successfully and now to uh, actually judge if it runs properly or not we are going to uh, work this on the you know the chrome version as well so that we can check on both the devices actually you can even use the android uh, emulator if you have it actually i'm using the m1 macbook air so uh, it doesn't yet support uh, you know android emulators don't support m1 chip yet um, so now I'm going to run this on Chrome. It works on all three devices. So now we can do flutter run dash D 
Chrome. Just will open the Chrome version for us. And now we'll in the meantime we'll just create a room and the room will have a name of Rivan and let's name it something new. Let's name it RRR very new and we'll create now waiting for the connection over here and actually let's just wait I'll just fast forward it and come back when this loads up okay so welcome back this chrome has been loaded now we'll join the room and we'll join in from the room num and the room name will be rrr and join so now we'll try and you can see that it we can draw it pretty well right and if we go outside of this it overflows all right so now i hope this is clear over here also we can draw uh, work on the paint screen functionality like the uh, color selection and uh, stroke width and everything so now what we want to do is we have to go to the ui part the build function and over here below the container yeah, inside the column we need to create a row basically we want to let me run the app first so uh, we basically want to create a row of uh, options from where we can select so now i'll create a row and the row should have children obviously and the children should be one an icon button and the icon button should have an icon of icons dot lens color lens and the color should be the selected color variable that we had declared in the previous video and it should have an on pressed function for now we'll just keep it empty after the color this is for the color selection after that we need to create a slider which uh, which we can uh, adjust uh, and then uh, we can just decrease or increase the stroke width so we'll just create an expanded which will take in most of this uh, all the available space in the row and it should have a child of slider and it should have a minimum width of 1.0 and a maximum width of 10 the label we'll add is stroke width dollar stroke width yeah and uh, should have an active color of selected color and the value should be stroke width these are all the variables that we had created in the previous video and uh, we'll uh, uh, we'll uh, uh, you know change the values in this video according to the conditions now we'll receive a value which is of the type double in the on change and after that uh, we'll do all the function part uh, later in the video after the expanded we again need an icon button i'll just copy it from here and the icon should be layers clear so this will be used to remove all the like everything on the screen basically it will be clear screen uh, functionality all right now we'll just save it and see so now i'll just create a room one one two three max size two room size two create and here we see it since our uh, initial stroke width, the value over here we have given stroke width and our stroke width was 2.0 if you go back over here and see that the stroke width is 2.0. So that's why it's a little uh, ahead. If you put it 5.0, it will be over here. But now it looks very good. It looks very clean. And yeah, obviously we can just still, uh, you know, paint. Now, 
what we want to do is focus on the functionality part so now uh, first we will work with the select color uh, um, function so now what we are going to do is in the on press itself we are going to call select color and the select color and the select color will uh, create the function over here void select color and the select color uh, will return a dialog box it will give us a dialog box from where we can select multiple colors now we'll return show dialog it will give a context which we uh, which it will get it from here and the builder the builder should again it will receive one context uh, context and after that it will uh, sorry and this context will uh, return an alert dialog box so instead of this we'll just create an uh, arrow function and it will create alert dialog now the alert dialog should have a title of text which is choose color and it should have content of single child scroll view so that uh, even uh, we don't get that yellowish uh, error uh, that the screen has overflown All right now we'll need a child and for this this child will be a block picker and it will basically allow us to create uh, you know select colors uh, from a range of variety of colors or uh, the widely used colors for that we are going to use uh, you know a module uh, package and you can find it by going over here in the flutter dot i mean sorry pub dot dev and over here flutter underscore color picker and this is a, a package we are going to use i'll uh, mention it in the description as well and it will be suitable for our application since it provides null safety and supports every uh, version of os we'll go over here we'll copy this and i have this sorry for a color picker and i have this uh, you know a vs code extension that allows me to just type it over here and it will automatically add to my pubspec.yaml file i'll show you this extension this is a extension i'll link this in the description as well pubspec assist all right the next thing we want to do is now it will give us a widget named block picker you can read about uh, this more on their official website uh, I've, uh, now uh, it will uh, have a picker color and the picker color will be selected color i'm um, sorry selected color and on color changed we want we will receive one color uh, that the user has selected and uh, what we want to do is you know send the color to the index.js file but this is not how uh, normally we can't send uh, the color since like suppose uh, i have a color and it's colors dot white i can't just take socket and dot emit i directly can't do socket dot emit and color and over here pass in the color it won't accept this uh, there will be errors and uh, everything so instead what we are going to do is we are going to create a variable color string and we are going to convert this color the color that we'll receive over here we'll convert it to string now we'll have a value string as well which will color uh, which will contain the hex value not the actual hex value the color you know suppose this is a color so this value it will contain and it will be value string 
and we'll do color string dot split and then we'll put in this zero x ah, sorry zero x then we'll take in the second array that we'll get after splitting then we'll split this array again then we'll split after this and see for now i'll just keep it print color string and print value string so that uh, after we select the values you'll get to know what uh, exactly was happening in this i'll explain this to you again now i'll create a map and the map will have color and the color should be value string and the room name we have to pass in the room name is data of room name and after this we need to so emit the room name so socket emit color change and after that map map is what we are going to pass in all right so this is done now what is the error we are getting okay we need to import this and we import it so now we'll just save it and now if we go back to our app this shouldn't work okay this works all right i thought we need to uh hot restart the app or something so that's fine so now as you can see we are getting this now uh we need to mention below okay and cancel buttons we can do this quite easily after in the alert dialog box itself uh we'll have actions tab and in the actions of uh, property we need to pass in a text button um text button and the text button uh, should have an on pressed function and on pressed function will be navigator and uh this will have actually a child of text close so we need to close this uh, alert dialog box when the user clicks when the close button uh, comes over here so to do that we'll just do navigator dot of context and we'll just pop it so now Mm. now if we just close this it will close we won't add the okay button here uh since uh when the color is changing we are actually emitting this to the server uh the index.js file the server that we have right or else what you could have done is created a global variable then uh we could have set the state uh and then we could have passed the value to this and it would have worked uh, well but uh we'll do the do it this way now we'll go to our index.js file whiteboard sockets now we have color socket and over here socket dot on color change and over here what we're getting color and a room name all right so now uh, what we are going to do is we are going to pass this to us a uh, room name like the we are going to pass this data to our room name and we'll emit color change and we have color cool now we uh, we sent a request from your which is client sided so we emitted a request color change from a cl client sided to a server now we uh, sent a request from the server to all the clients in the room right now 
we'll again go over here to listen to the request socket um actually it would be underscore socket dot on color change i hope that was the name um color change yeah and over here we'll get a color string sorry over here yeah and here we'll put a semicolon so now uh, we passed in the color uh, value we got right so now what we want to do is convert this color string to the color value the color object the color class we had right so we'll do int value is equal to int dot pass color string and it will have a radix of 16 i'm sorry wait dix uh, 16 and uh, we'll have color and we'll name it color let's just name it other color <laughs> i'm too bad at naming things and we'll create a new color object and it will have the color value and after that we need to just set state to and selected color should be equal to other color okay so this should work now let's see if it works okay we need to actually even get the chrome version running chrome run dash d oh sorry flutter run dash d chrome okay so now if we actually try to change the color over here it isn't affecting the app if we go to our debug console there are no errors we'll just close this and restart the app so we can actually remove this as well there's no need and wait for both okay so we have these two both running in separate oh yeah okay so now i forgot the name of the room we were in but let's just restart our app okay yeah our app is running okay we yeah, are now let's just create row enter a name everyone one two three four two two create join yo one two three four join okay so now if we select a color blue color and now you see the color of this has changed exactly what we wanted and now you can see that it works pretty well it works blue color it shows blue color orange color red color and on both the screens okay pretty cool so now we want to work on the thickness this thing over here so to do that we'll go the go over here in the over here on changed function over here and then in the on change function uh what we want to do is basically just emit to our socket socket dot emit oh, sorry and we'll emit stroke width the logic is very similar to the color one we're just doing it differently for this you can actually try layers clear for yourself like you can try it out on your own uh, after pausing the video and uh, i'll do the 
I'll do this as well. Now uh, we'll go to in the server folder. I mean server to our server over here, and over here we have stroke socket, and we have socket dot on stroke width, and what we are getting is just the value the double value of how much the stroke is like is it seven eight nine what's the thickness of the a uh, paint brush and we'll pass in actually the room name as well math math is equal to stroke sorry not stroke yeah value and the value should be value and a room name which we'll pass in as widget dot data. I hope we have done this for the selector as well. Not too sure. Yeah, data of room name. Cool. And now we just end this. We'll pass in map away. After that, we'll go come over here. We have value and we have room name. And after the stroke width, we'll just emit to the in the room room name. I will have to room name dot emit. And what we are going to emit is hmm, let's think of a name uh, or we can just do stroke width. Not thinking much. And over here, what we are going to pass in is just the value. So we we'll just do value. And over here, there. Yeah. So after this is done, we are going to come in the paint screen again, and we are going to follow the same process over here for color uh, for the stroke width socket dot on and over here stroke width and we'll receive a value over here and this value we're going to set the state so value set state and it will be stroke width the stroke initial value we had given as 2 we are going to update this value with with the whatever value we receive so now we are going to do is equal to value and let's just convert this to double for extra surety you know it's always good to have this Okay, so after this is done, let's try and run our app. Um, doesn't seem to be working, I guess. On change. Let's try to rerun our app. Maybe it works. So now we are going to create another room. Enter a name demand. Create. Join. And you see, we can change the width and it affects our app as well. You can see the difference between this. Okay, perfect. So we had to uh, hot, uh, restart this app because, um, you know, the state of the app changed. 
then the next thing we want to do is uh, select the color selection part i mean sorry the clear screen part you can actually try this uh, out on your own and let me know in the comments if you could uh, do it okay let's start so on press we are going to do again socket dot emit and we are going to emit uh, let's say green screen and we are just going to pass in widget or let's say data of room name both of these things work um, because they're essentially the same things and over here we are going to let me just close this and over here we are just going to do clear screen and over here we are going to have socket dot on and what was the name clear screen yeah clean screen and we are going to get a value over here i'm um, sorry so we are going to get a room name over here and the room name should be io dot to room name dot emit clear screen and nothing to pass in the second argument and now we can just go back over here in the paint screen tab and listen to it okay socket dot on and we have clear screen and we'll get some data let's say it has to get some data but we have no data over here we'll receive nothing and we are going to set the state and we are just going to do points dot clear so whatever array was uh, like whatever value was there in the array of points over here whatever uh, points it consisted of let's say we drew this so there are multiple points in the array so now if we did, uh, click on this button it will basically clear of this array so there will be nothing for us to see since there are no points there will be uh, no rendering part happening right so now this is pretty much it uh, yeah let me know in the comments if you could do it by yourself now since we change the state of the app we'll have to restart this i'll actually meet you after uh, you know i complete both of these tasks like loading up and creating rooms I've created new rooms and let's test our app. So now over here we have suppose this and we enlarge this and do this. Change the color to blue and then just do this. Right. So now if we click over here, it removes everything. We are going to work on the chat functionality in the app. Uh, but before uh, jumping into the chat, uh, we'll first uh, render the text uh, details. So uh, let me first run the app over here. And then uh, we'll just go down in the widget tree. And after this, after this row, we need to. Okay, so after this, we need to. Uh, render a uh, text so whatever uh, the user is typing like whatever the user has to guess the player 2 has to guess that we have to show in the form of underscores so how are we going to do it let's jump in so we are going to have a row and inside that row we are going to have uh, an evenly distributed uh, space space evenly and after that, we are going to have in the children a uh, text blank widget. Now, what will this text blank widget be? So, to uh, get the text blank widget, we'll first go on the top. Over here, we'll just create a list of, sorry, list of widget 
and we name it text blank widget and it will just be empty okay so our uh, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a function uh, that runs uh, uh, every time we get a word so we'll just create a function now where do we create this after the init st in its state we'll just create it over here and uh, the function would be void render text blank and it will uh, receive it will receive para parameter of uh, word we'll just name it text and after that the so first thing you're going to do is you know clear uh, the text blank widget this list so we'll just clear it off so that there's no remaining you know previous uh, uh, list of widgets that consists in it now we'll just run a for loop for int i equal to zero and we'll run it till the length of the string and after that we just need to add to the test text blank widget the text and what will the text be an underscore so that user can guess we don't need to put in text uh, and uh, we don't need to put text at i uh, because uh, we don't want to give the user the name of the word we just want to give uh, the number of characters in the word so we just do text underscore and we'll just provide some styling after this uh, i want the text to be just a big text so we'll just do 30 Okay, now we'll uh, go to our function over here, uh, wherever we are getting update room. So in the update room, we'll get the word that we want. So what we can do over here is set before set state. I mean, in the set state, we'll just call this function render text blank. And what will the word be? Uh, well, we know that room data at word. That's what we had saved in the MongoDB right and the next thing we want to do is go down in the pane screen so now this should reflect as you know the name so i'll also print the word so that uh, you can know what word was it and how many uh, blank spaces are given and if all of that is correct so now we'll just create a room I'll put in my name. Create and here we can see we have five spaces and the word was lowly. All right, now this works perfectly as we wanted. Now we'll work on the chat functionality. So now we'll go uh, to the bottom of the screen. I mean, sorry, we'll go in the uh, a widget tree and we'll start to make the ui of it so what we want after a row is we want a container where we can specify a height and obviously you might have guessed it uh, we will use list view builder after this media query dot of context dot size dot height into 0 0.3 if y'all don't understand media query i'll make a separate video on it uh it's basically for a responsive design of the app so that it can work on any uh height devices now we'll have a child and child will be list view dot builder and the builder will have various properties so first it will be item builder. It will receive a context and an index. And we are going to return uh, a widget. For now, let's just keep it empty. And uh, it will have a controller. Controller will be scroll controller. Now we are going to create this uh, on the top. We'll just copy this and go to the top. 
and over here create scroll controller scroll controller score scroll controller is equal to new scroll controller i don't think there is a need of new over here yeah okay so now uh what we could have uh what we have to do now is go over here in the controller we'll just mark shrink wrap to true and uh item count we have to give now what will the item count be so item count will render as many uh, uh you know the text boxes so as to say the so it will render these many whatever index we give to it like whatever number we give suppose 10 so it will render 10 different uh item builder that whatever uh, we'll uh, return in this function it will uh give these many number of items to us so now uh what we want to do is again go in the top and over here we'll create list of map and it will have messages why will it be map because we need to store the message the whatever user input is and the username of the user so now this will be messages dot length and after this we need to return a list type You can style this list, uh, list style according to your preferences. I'll just keep it. I'll just keep it very simple for now. And we'll have a title. Now, what will the title be? So the title will be the username. Now, before jumping into all of this, uh, we need to get the message. Now, message will be the messages, the array that we created for now it's empty, but we'll fill it in with some values after uh, later in the video and one particular message whatever the index we get zero in the start then one then two and then its values we'll get its values over here in the message now the element will be uh, the title uh, will be of the widget text and what will the text consist of message dot element at zero so it will grab the first uh, property uh, f uh, like suppose uh, we have an object over here right so now we have an object now the object uh, has the property name Rivan message how are you so this will uh, grab us the name the value for the name and uh, uh, if we do one over here then it will grab us the message like whatever input user gave right so now let's just remove this and we'll put in style text style color colors dot black and font size should be 19 and we'll just bold it After that, uh, we'll just go down. We'll add a subtitle and subtitle has to be the message. Now, as I explained to you, uh, the what will the subtitle be? Message dot element one. Right, and uh, we'll need some styling. So we'll just do style, text style and color will be colors dot gray and the font size should be 16 okay now this is it uh, for uh, showing the messages like displaying the messages you can just comment over here displaying messages now after this container the last thing we would want is obviously uh, an input field now the input field will not be in the column make sure it will be in the stack and the stack in the stack we'll just align it properly 
alignment and where do we want it in the bottom center over here right so we'll just do alignment dot bottom center and we'll have a child child will be a container and then we'll need a margin and margin should have uh, from the left and right both 20 so we'll use symmetric and in the symmetric we'll pass in horizontal and over here 20 so this will create margin from both the sides and then we'll have a child child will be text field and the text field should have okay so what we're going to do is just copy this from over here text field we'll have to return and over here we'll just return this okay the hint text should be uh what should we need in the hint text like whatever the placeholder hint text is a placeholder whatever we'll see over here so it will be your guess and I'll, now we also need to create a controller and we'll just name it controller it's fine i think controller should work we'll just create a text editing controller controller is equal to text editing controller we'll go in the bottom again to the bottom again and over here we should see this but uh, why didn't we use the custom text field and instead we used uh we just copy pasted it so uh, th uh, this is because we needed some extra features like uh autocorrect to be turned off so that the user can guess peacefully and it doesn't keep interrupting him and change his answers and um there will be a read only option as well but we'll do it in the later videos it's for the more advanced stuff and then yeah this is pretty much it now we can see it in the bottom of the screen your guess now we need to have a text input action as well over here we do text input action text input action dot done all right now now actually uh, we just have to put in an on submitted function now, on submitted we'll get some value and on submitted is because we don't have uh, you know a uh, enter option as such over here like over here uh, you know a button so that we can just uh, click over here instead uh, you can just press enter over here and this on submitted function will run that time and it will give us a value of type string and over here we just need to emit this data to this uh, to our server right so we'll just do if value dot trim dot is empty then we will create a map and the map will consist of various things over here first will be username the username will be widget dot data nickname and it can uh, even be data of room nickname both of these things are the same then we'll have message the message will be value dot trim then there will be word the word will be data of room word there will be room name data of room name it can even be widget dot data name then there will be 
total time and it will be the round time okay sorry all right now we'll just emit uh, so we'll do socket dot emit and we'll receive a message um, socket emit message and over here we'll just pass in the map and after that we'll just uh, clear off uh, any values that are in the controller using controller dot clear and then um, this is pretty much it now we'll go in the server and over here we'll listen to the message now where can we do this we will let's just do over here socket dot on message now you must be an expert with this because we have done it so many times we'll get some data over here and over here we'll just put in a try catch block again and after that try catch block we need to run it so what we want to do over here is we'll get io.2 we'll just emit all of this data dot room name so this data object we are not deobjectifying uh, like we de did over here because there are too many fields that are we send that we are sending over here so instead we are just doing data and data dot room name and then um we'll just emit so we'll do emit message and over here we'll pass in some things so that one will be username and username will be data dot username message will be guessed it and yeah this is pretty much it okay after that uh we need to just log this error if there is any console dot log error dot to string right now you know that red we'll again go over here and over here we'll just listen to it so after this only we we'll do socket dot on message and we'll get message data over here right and we'll just put a semicolon so what we want to do over here is set state and we'll add to the messages array as i said it will be a map and we'll add to the messages array the message data sorry set data right now we'll just do now uh we should see the messages coming hey i think we need to reload this yeah okay so create actually i'll even start the chrome so that you can see that we have done it i mean uh it's server sided so i'll see you when both of these load up so we had uh, you know a bug type over here um it should be value dot trim dot is not empty only when this is not empty then it will run the value over here we mentioned if it's not empty then only this will run we had put is empty over here and thus we couldn't see the message and now if we go and create a room room yes i'll create now join this from your hey and we just click on join we see okay so now it's coming guessed it um that's because uh, we had passed in the message as guessed it 
instead of guessed it we need to pass in data dot message that's my error i'm really sorry okay so now you can see uh we'll type it we'll type the messages over here hey how are you and now you can see uh, our messages show up but uh, the only problem over here is if we type one more message over here hey you see we have to scroll down so instead we are just going to do this automatically so uh, when we receive the message from the server over here socket dot on message we are going to use the scroll controller that we created so we'll just create scroll controller and we'll use the animate to function so that you know we can even uh, use some uh, uh, transition like effects of animation and it shows up beautifully so now uh, we'll just do we'll animate to scroll controller to the max extent like whatever we can we'll scroll that much so we'll do scroll controller dot position dot max scroll extent plus 40 and the duration should be we'll put in um, 200 milliseconds let's say and our curve should be like the uh, you know the like animation type basically so it will be curve dot ease in out and we'll just format this document now we'll run now this shouldn't happen i guess yeah we need to restart the app i'll meet you after this app restarts okay so now if we type in hey you can see it scrolls automatically now if we type from your yo types in automatically hey and this works really perfectly okay now if we just enlarge this and see it works good enough we are as well okay we're going to change terms based on the uh, user uh, guessing so uh, to do that uh, first we need to initialize a variable int guest user counter that's what i'll name it so what this variable is going to do is it will uh, keep track of the number of users that have guessed the correct word right so we'll just see this and go down and uh, where we are going to go is uh, where we have emitted a message over here and in the map we are just going to add another property which is guest user counter and we're just going to pass in guest user counter so for now it's just zero but we are going to modify the values uh, 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 later on in the video. You'll uh, notice when and how we do it. So over here, uh, when we receive the message, over here we need to first now check. Uh, so here, um, we just need to uh, emit the message, right? So here we'll just emit guest user counter so we are just emitting so that we can just uh, send it to all the users right so for now it's just data dot guest user counter when we work on the score points uh, system uh, you'll see that we'll increment the value uh, 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 ahead so um, to do this uh, we'll just go over here now we'll go in the uh, on uh, to the receiver uh, of the message over here and over here we are just going to say guest user counter is equal to message data uh, sorry message data and it will be guest user counter right so uh, after this is done we need to uh, put some conditions over here so if guest to user counter is equal equal to the data of room and if it's equal to the number of players in the room 
then we have to do something but this isn't enough only this much isn't enough there should be minus one as well so what this is basically that we are going to update the counter as and when one user guesses so if the guest user counter is equal to the number of players in the room minus one because uh, the host will not be able to guess uh, guess i mean uh suppose someone is drawing he won't be able to guess right so uh it, there should be length minus one so that the uh so that the uh, uh drawer draw cannot guess all right now um what we are going to do is socket dot emit yes, socket dot emit change turn and after that we are just going to pass in data of room name all right so we are just if the uh, if the number of uh, you know uh, you, like everyone in the room has guessed uh, so we'll just change the turn so we'll just tell uh, another user and we'll give another word to the user another user i mean right so now we'll go in the index.js file again and we are going to find uh, uh not find actually we haven't created yet so what we are going to create over here is socket dot on change turn so we are going to create this callback over here and it will be asynchronous it will get a name and what we want to do is change the turn so to change the turn we'll uh, need a new word we'll need to uh, change the turn index if we go over in the mongodb i had cleared my database over here by clicking on this icon so if you go over here there's a turn index so this turn index for is to keep track of who which user is you know uh, whose ch uh, chance it is to draw all right so we're going to change that as well uh, and uh, yeah so let's get started so the first thing we are going to do is create a try catch block over here and in the try catch block over here we are go going to find the room first which room we are in room dot find one and we'll find one by its name and this much would be enough uh, because this has a name as well the property is name so this will be fine then we need to uh, get the index so index is equal to room dot turn index now we want to check if the room this turn index so if this turn index plus one is equal equal to room dot players dot length if it's equal to this if i mean if uh, this incremented by one since it starts from zero is equal to players length then we need to increase the current round right so uh your way a current round is one so we just need to increment it by one and we'll change it to two so after that is done uh, we need to again put an if condition if room dot current round is less than equal to room dot max rounds so this max rounds is the occupancy right here we have max rounds two the maximum capacity in the room so if the current round is less than or it's equal to room dot max rounds then we need to get the get a new word so we look const word is equal to get word we'll call this api function that we had created and after that we are just going to do room dot word is equal to word then room dot turn index is equal to index the turn index plus one and whatever remainder we get after its division with uh, uh length of the players in the room so we'll do room dot players dot length 
then we need to change the turn room dot turn is equal to room dot players and we need to find this room dot turn index yeah so we are changing the turn uh, i don't think we have created it over here it will create it will uh, create this property room dot turn and this turn will be the players uh, you know uh, the, it will grab one player from here in the array for now we have one but when other people have joined there will be two three five eight so it will grab one of these by their indexes right and it will just uh, it will create a new property turn index over here and uh, the turn index will be uh, an object okay so then we just need to save the room room is equal to await room dot save after that we just need to uh, tell our room that the uh, you know that we have changed the turn so we'll just emit okay and now if uh, this is less than and equal to that means the game is still going on if it's not going on then what we want to do is show the leaderboard right after the game ends what do we want to do show the leaderboard so we'll do that in another video okay so now we'll again go to our paint screen over here and over here i mean we'll just write it below socket dot on message over here socket dot on and over here uh, we just have to write what was the name change turn city change turn and we'll get some data from here and uh, we first need to keep track of the old word like the old word we had so that we can display to the to all the users that this was our new word i mean uh, uh, you'll see it after i type it string old word is equal to data of room word so this is the old word now we need to show a dialog and the dialog will uh, receive uh, a context and there will be a builder and builder will also receive a context right now after this is done we need to return uh, an alert dialog box so we are going to return that return alert dialog and alert dialog should have a title and the title will be centered it will be centered to the screen and will have a child of text word was old word okay so if it's, if it's still unclear to you what the, we are doing over here we are basically keeping track of the old word since uh, uh in in some time we are going to replace this old uh, this data of room word with a new word right we change the turn right so over here we created a new word so this data has a new word so we just need to uh, uh so uh, we are just keeping track of old word over here and then just showing to all the users okay so this was the old word and then uh, we also need to show uh, that uh, now we need to make some changes so we need to replace some things like data of room variable that we had created that keeps track of all the uh, properties in the uh, in the room so now we are going to replace that we are going to call set state and data of room should be equal to data this data we are getting from here then we need to render a new set of text blanks this we need to adjust it according to the new word we had created so we'll do data of word 
and then uh, we are going to set guest user counter to zero okay since a new round has started nobody has guessed it uh, guessed it zero users have guessed it so we are going to keep it zero and then we are also going to remove all the drawings uh, we do right so we are just going to do points dot clear and after this is done uh, we just uh, need to remove this so uh, uh, so we just need to show this word was old word for a certain period of time right we don't want to keep it showing on the screen so we are going to use future dot delayed over here so that we can just show it for uh, you know certain amount of time over here I'm going to show it for three seconds and it's a callback so in the callback we'll just paste all of this all right now I'm going to format this document so that you can see it clearly now over here it's giving me an error and the reason is that the alert dialog shouldn't be over here instead it should be over here okay now I'll just format this document okay so basically what we are doing is we are going to show this alert dialog for just three seconds so uh, after this three seconds are done what we want to do is we are going to call navigator dot of context dot pop so using the pop function we will we can remove this alert dialog which will only and this pop uh, will run after three seconds okay so now we can just save this and i think uh, with this our change turn function is done you won't see anything as such because you know uh because we are not changing the value of guest user counter anywhere in our app so we are going to work on this user score and we are going to change the value of this guest user counter so that we can see the changes of what we did in the previous video of the series as well so uh, to do that first uh, for the score the score is going to be based on time right so we need to first create a timer uh, so our timer is so the first thing we need to do is display our timer and we are going to display our timer by just going down and we'll just use a floating action button for it this is where we are going to display it but we want uh, to design it as well so uh, like we need to add margins and stuff so we'll just wrap it with a container then I'll give it a margin from bottom and I'll give it a value of 30 then I'll give a child and the child will be floating action button All right. okay let's see what I okay yeah so uh, we need to add a non pressed function and it's not going to do anything as such but it's a required field and floating action button so we just add that and we'll give it an elevation of 7 you can try out the values on your own it's just the ui and we're going to give a background color of colors dot white now the child is going to be a text and the text should display the value that will keep on changing so we'll just give it a value and we'll just call it start we are going to create this variable in a moment we'll also give it some styling and the styling will be text style and the color should be colors dot black and a font size of let's say 22 now we are going to go on the top and create the start variable over here int underscore start is equal to zero right now uh, we just need to update this no the start will actually be 60 right because the timer uh, like every round would be of 60 seconds so we'll start the timer with 60 seconds now we need to implement the functionality for start timer 
we'll just create a function let's create it below in a state void start timer and what will the timer do so the timer uh, just has to keep on clicking uh, every second and uh, the start variable key will keep on decreasing right so what we're going to do is um sorry not over here over here we're going to create another variable one second and it will we will give it a duration of one second seconds one now we'll take the timer um so we need a timer variable up here so we'll create timer underscore timer and Yeah, so we need to create a timer over here and uh, we'll just mark it as late since we are going to run this function in the init state. So it will, uh, you know, it will be initialized uh, bef uh, uh, before the widget tree builds. Now, um, what we're going to do is timer and the timer will equal to new timer um timer dot periodic and uh, we'll give it a duration of one second it will run after one second and we it will give us a callback function and in this callback function we're going to check if the start is equal equal to zero that means the timer has been reached the users are not allowed to guess anymore guess anymore so what we're going to do is we are going to emit change turn and uh, one second socket dot emit change turn and we'll pass in data of sorry not over here data of room and we'll pass in name of the room over here as you go over here in the index.js file you'll see change turn go over to change turn and you'll find it will need only name all right so we just pass in that all right so now uh, after that is done we just need to call set state and tell that the timer is over so we'll cancel it timer dot cancel now we are getting this error because we need to import async library from the you know there and think I forgot to put plate plate timer over here correct after this is done so now if the start is not zero that means uh, users are allowed to guess we can just do set state and we'll just do underscore start minus minus so it will keep on decreasing after every second the value of start by one and this is exactly what we want to do now we'll remove these warnings and this looks cool okay now uh, the next thing we want to do is now we work on the game logic so uh, before that what we are going to do is we are going to the change turn where we listen to the change turn from index.js file we'll go over there over here and over here if you see um after the ch uh, turn is changed the value of um this uh, the value of uh start is going to be zero since we kept on decreasing the value and it ultimately reached zero and when zero reach we change the turn so after the uh, turn is changed we are resetting everything we also need to reset this value to again 60 right after this is done um i think we are uh, good to go so uh, now we'll work on the score logic in the index.js file but for that we need to go to um uh 
the message for uh, where we are emitting the message to our socket like to our server we need to go there and over here we need to pass in some data so the first thing will be total time total time is always 60 you can just create a variable on the top and call it round time or something so that uh, if you want the round uh, like the round time to be changed according to your preference it can be changed it will be much easier but i'm going to follow this path now i'm going to create a variable time taken so this is the total time of the round and we are going to pass in the time taken for the user to guess so the time taken to, for the users to guess is 60 minus underscore start and this is all we are going to give right now um, we'll go in the index.js file and over here socket.on message this is where we need to um, do our stuff so in the try catch block now we need to check if data.message that we received is equal to the data.word so if the user typed the message uh, is equal to the word in the uh, you know the randomly generated word like unslightly so it will uh, check that if it is equal to that then what we are going to do is create a room I mean find a room sorry room dot find with the name as data dot room name and we are going to find the user player so the user player is equal to room zero so we are not using find one you can use find one and get the value but we'll use find so it will return us an array but it will consist of only one array because we have set the name to be unique right in the model of our room we had set the uh, name of the room to be unique so now we'll go to the room dot players right over here over here we found a room suppose we found this room we'll go we'll find this players tab and we'll use this players array and over here we are going to filter according to some condition and what is the uh, uh, condition going to be that the player that we receive their nickname is equal so player dot nickname is equal equal to data dot username so what we are going doing here is finding a player finding the player whose points we have to increment since they have guessed the word right so um we are going to check if data dot time taken what did we spell it over here time taken correct if data dot time taken is not equal equal to zero so we are going to do double check over here over here also we are cancelling the timer but suppose there are any issues we'll just check so if user player at zero dot points filter will also give us you know a list of an array of uh, players or objects so we are just going to increment their points and this point uh, system is you know based on trial and error you can just create your own uh, uh, you know point system but I've created mine with some random values but the basic idea is that the user who guesses faster will get more points than the user who guesses later obviously so this is what I've uh, come up with. It's trial and error for me as well. You can do it for yourself or you can just copy this. Now we'll just save the room. Make sure to do room at zero else it will not save properly or give you some errors. Not even give you errors but you'll be stuck over here for a long time. And now we are just going to emit to the user so io dot to data dot room name dot emit message and what we are going to emit similar to this we are just going to emit similar to this and the message what we are going to change is the message over here the message is going to be replaced by guessed it since the user guessed it we don't need to show the 
answer to the other users who are still guessing they'll just be replaced by guessed it and over here guest user counter should obviously increment by one since you've to, uh, you, uh, one user has counted it i mean guessed it right now we'll just do else so if the uh, message does not match the word that means they are not equal what we are going to do we are just going to do this nothing else cool and now i think we are good to go so welcome back our app is loaded but i just realized an error we have made in this so the error is that we have not uh you know started this timer anywhere so we are just going to copy this timer and we are just going to paste it so we are going to take this start timer and where will we do it so we want to first do it when uh you know see your where we have written start the timer so we'll just do it over here start timer so when j uh, is join is not equal to true that means the game has started we'll just do start timer that is when all the users have entered right and uh, what uh, where else can we do it so you know we can just do it after we change the turn right we need to start a new timer as well we st set start to 60 and after that we just need to go over here we need to cancel the timer the previous timer that was on and start the timer over here and now i'll see you when i start both of these apps and run it hey guys welcome back and we have started our app and as you can see the timer is ticking off now uh, what is the what is our word we'll just see over here vary so we'll just copy that and put it and we say guessed it and as you can see uh, we see the word if three players join in it will wait for the three players to guess it and then only it can see so suppose i type in the wrong word hello my name so it will just give out hello my name and nothing else and um you this you can see the interactions and over here again let's see the word um i'm not sure what the word is now i'll just refresh this and see over here and actually we should also see a uh, scores improvement which we'll see afterwards but let me just see the word gaping so we'll just do gaping and as you can see this works like a charm so now the next thing we want to do is um before ending this tutorial we just want to make sure certain things like over here uh both of the users don't guess get these you know uh underscores one gets the word that uh, he or she is supposed to draw and one gets these blanks and this is also turned to read only and not uh, uh allowed for both of them to guess only uh, the one who is not drawing is allowed to guess so, but before that i'll show you the score system as well so over here um we'll go at the top, bottom and over here in the players we will see points 182 and this should be a less point guy and here we see 43 since this is based on time the point system works like a charm uh, so before ending this tutorial let's complete the task we have thought of and uh, to do that over here uh, we'll go to the align widget uh, that we had created and over here uh, we have a text field so we so we want to see the uh, show the text field only if uh it's the user's turn like if the user is in drawing then we don't want to show uh this text box so what we are going to do is check if data of room and we had a property turn and inside that turn we had nickname if that nickname is equal equal to is not equal to actually and you might have guessed it it's not equal to the widget dot data nickname we get 
then what we want to do is show this align or we'll just come over here and we'll not show anything and we'll pass in a container you can't put in null here i guess because you can still try let's just try it and it will give you an error because this is supposed to have a widget tree and not uh, a null value and over here the, thus you're passing in container and it will give you no error right and uh, you will need to start this app again and uh, we'll see that later on so the next thing we want to do is um you know about this thing over here as i said mentioned before so we'll just go to our text blank widget that we had created and in our widget tree over here what we are going to do is we'll check if data of room turn similar to what we did before nickname is not equal to widget dot data nickname then we'll show or uh, display a row else we are going to display as text that is center aligned and we're going to display child a text and text is data of room word and we are going to style this text a bit so we'll do style text style and we'll just increase the size to let's say 30 and yeah i'm sorry i think let i zoom in ah, sorry wrong buttons okay so what we are going to do now is just create a room a one two one two three four five six and i'll just give it six as one more and i'll create now you'll get this error and i'll i'll tell you in a while why we're getting this and i'll just give it another name let's say this one two three four five six six and if we click on join this error will disappear see and we get this so this is working superficial and this is our board as well and now if we do this you'll see that this changes as well and now you'll see we can see this and this guy has over here this right and now i don't know <laughs> this is a long word but that's okay uh we are just using the random adjectives uh words list that you had just copied from the github but now the thing is why were we getting that red screen right why did we get that so uh, the reason was that is because um you see over here come down to widgets and over here you'll see uh, we are just doing data of room turn nickname and all the users haven't entered so uh, the uh, so in our database we don't know what the turn is right this turn property hasn't been created as you can see over here the turn property hasn't been created after we created a game now let me refresh this and you'll see that we go to the bottom and we'll see a turn object over here so this turn object only gets created after um you know both of these things happen like when both of the users are in the game if the maximum capacity is two right that's why we are getting this error so what can we do to escape this error is your question right so to escape this error, what we are going to do is implement a waiting lobby. So we'll wait uh, as long as the user enters, like both all the users have entered, and then we are going to start the game. So we won't see this error coming in, right? So now to do that, uh, we need to go over here and we need to conditionally render some widget. So over here, we need to first check if the data of room we are receiving is not equal to null if it's not equal to then then uh, is not equal to null then only we need to uh, put a stack else we'll just put a circular progress indicator which is center aligned since uh, the data of room hasn't been received so that means that the connection is being set uh, is like the connection is being set up right now we'll go back on the top and over here if it's uh, if the data of room is null 
is not null then what we want to do is check if data of room is not uh, I mean data of room is join is not equal to true I mean if data of uh, room is joined that means that uh, all the players have joined in then only the game should start right else we'll uh, implement a waiting lobby right so over here before that we'll just put um what will be put waiting lobby let's say and uh, we'll just name it waiting lobby screen and uh, we are going to create this screen um, so let's create waiting lobby screen dot dot and over here I'm going to call it as um, a stateful widget and we are going to name it as waiting lobby screen it is going to uh, uh, get some constructors obviously so we are going to import them as and when we need them all right uh, so we made a type over here we'll change that screen 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 right so over here what we need to return is a safe area so what does this safe area widget do the safe area widget basically ignores all of this part where date and your uh, Wi-Fi icon, battery symbol, if Bluetooth is there, Bluetooth icon, it ignores all of that, the notch part basically, and starts rendering widgets from here and not from the top. Else the default behavior is just to start from the top. So we'll return a safe area and over here, we'll just return a column. What will the column be? Column will have so many children like it will show us the number of players it is waiting for uh, for the num uh, the player names that have joined in and a room code to copy so uh, first of all a uh, column is going to start from the top over here but we need to have some margin over here so let's just create a sized box over here and this sized box will have a height of media query of context dot size dot height into 0 0.03 and then we need to add padding the padding should be of the size cons i'm um, sorry padding and should have a padding of eight from all sides and then you need to have a child of text now what will this text show waiting for like it will show the number of uh, players we are waiting for so we'll just write waiting for and then over here so uh, let's say eight players to join so how will we calculate this number so to call calculate this number actually what we're going to do is over here we are just going to import some of them so let's say uh int occupancy and int number of players and let's import them required this dot occupancy required this dot number of players All right and we are going to end this and we'll remove this there's no need after that is done uh what is this saying we can just click over here add key yeah so this fixes for us and we can also do final and final now again we are going const right okay so uh to calculate this we are basically going to do you might have guessed it we are going to take the occupancy and we are going to subtract it from the number of players yeah seems logical now we'll do widget 
dot occupancy. Since this is a stateful widget, I'm not sure if we need stateful widget, but let's just keep it. Um, then uh, let's add some styling. We'll do style of text style and we'll just increase the size to 30. Cool. Now, um, after that, we are just going to again add a size to box. And sized box should have a height of, let's just copy this again. We are going to increase the height to let's say 0 0.06. And then uh, we'll have a container. And in this container, what we are going to uh, show is the text field, uh, which will only be read only using which we can just copy the code, the room code actually. So uh, let's just import this from your app. Yeah. And uh, we'll add the arguments later since we have more arguments to add. But uh, we'll just go to um, custom text field. We'll copy this from here. And I didn't. Okay, I didn't copy that. I'm going to copy this. And in the container, we want a margin of edge insets dot symmetric and in the horizontal direction 20 and in the child we are going to have that text field now this text field is not going to have any controller as such but um it is uh, we'll set the read only property to true so that the users can't write anything in that and we're going to add an on tap property now what does this on tap contain this uh, with this on tap, we need to make sure that the user can copy the code, the room code. App. So we'll do that. But before that, uh, let's provide some hint text. Let's say tap to copy room name. And over here, we'll just put a comma. Okay, now we'll write here copy room code. So in this on tap, we are going to do clipboard, which is a class given by Flutter service package, I guess. Yeah. And over here, uh, we are going to set the data. Now what this is clipboard and clipboard will set data to a clipboard or, or uh, you know, clipboard uh, data class. And uh, it will have some text. And what will the text be? You might have guessed it. The name of the lobby. So we are going to do final string lobby name and we are going to receive this as well require this dot lobby name and here we are going to pass in lobby name sorry widget dot it lobby name and after that is done so this is the code to copy and we are just going to add um, scaffold messenger basically we just want to show the user that yes you've copied this so we we'll do snack bar we have done this multiple times before and we are just going to say content text copied right now all of this makes sense so this is it and uh i actually want to see the results till now so uh, what error are we getting over here okay we missed a curly bracket and till now i want to see what we have done so we'll do that uh we'll pass in some uh, arguments so lobby name and what is the lobby name over here let's see our lobby what would be our lobby name uh data of room name yeah that was our lobby name the next thing we want to add is number of players and number of players would be uh what had we saved it as data of room players so we are this players array and we want to find its length so we do dot length and the last okay and the last argument occupancy what will the occupancy be 
um, data of room occupancy over here you can find occupancy as well here now what error are we getting a value of type null can't be assigned to the parameter oh. okay this was our error we needed to remove this it cannot be constant because this widget will keep uh, rebuilding as and when this data of room keeps on changing right so that was our mistake and now let's see it now if we let's say create a room hey one two one two 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 create waiting for one player to join and if we copy this room name it share it says copied i'll just go in another tab and paste it and this was our uh room name as well one two one two so now what we want to show over here is a list of players in the server right now suppose we have eight uh, players lobby so we need to see how many players are there right so over here we'll go down um uh, and i'll just format this so that even i can see properly and after this container uh we are going to add another sized box i'll just copy this sized box and over here a uh, size box height should be you know let's say 0.1 if we do multiply by 1 it will take the whole screen size we don't want that and then uh, we'll add text and we'll show players and the players should be style text style font size 80 Cool. and we need to next had list view dot builder and you might have guessed it uh we are just going to uh, add uh we are going to show list view like we are going to show user like this with the list view builder obviously since that's very easy to use we'll take in context index and after that uh we are going to return a list style that's the most obvious case for uh, list view and uh, you know whenever we use list view that's the most obvious case list style it provides everything and what will be the item count item count will be uh over here what have we got number of players so it will be widget dot number of players and over here we'll just return a list tile so what is the list tile going to have list tile is going to have a leading element that means the element that shows up on the over here on the left side like the leading element in the in a row of you know it's like a row of widget right so leading title subtitle and a trailing so lead, leading should be this so the leading should have a text and what will be uh, the text it will be dollar index but if we put an index it will show it will show, uh, it will start the counting from zero right so we'll do index plus 1 and we'll just put a full stop and then we'll add some style so you know textile and it should be a larger font and it should look bold so we'll do that font weight font weight dot bold and we also need to end this we also need a title and the title should have a text and what should the text be Uh, well it should uh, display players so we ultimately need this whole players array right so what we can do is we can just take in final we'll just put in players over here 
and it will be a required field required this dot players and over here um, we are going to pass in players and what will be players this it will be this array so we are going to take this players so this will be text widget dot players at index at nickname since I want their nickname so if you haven't understood this part uh, what we are basically doing is we are getting this players array right and we are going to their index so it will start from zero the numbering starts from zero so we'll take in zero and we'll open this and we'll get nickname and we'll get their nickname as well cool so now we'll again add some styling we'll do style text style and we're just going to copy this and let's see what error are we getting okay we, we are missing uh okay i'm not sure okay yeah and we need to remove this cool so we have this and uh, i think this is pretty much it for over here now if we go over here um we see players over here but that's not a problem think it will get fixed okay let's create hey i'll just pass in one two one two one two one two 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 create and uh, i think we are getting some pro issues over here so let's go over here now what i feel is that the column over here is having some issue we are not putting players in the array i think i mean column uh okay yeah so the problem might be that we want to do primary to true and shrink wrap to true as well and here we see our problems have been fixed so uh this primary will uh basically allow you to scroll it's advisable to use with a list view dot builder since you don't know since list view dot builder is used when you don't know the number of items that are going to come like it is going to be dynamic and this primary will allow you to make it scrollable as and when you know it gets increased okay so we see a player over here let's copy the room name since i forgot the room name obviously and over here uh, we'll add some name i'll just add mine and paste it over here and join and as you can see this is fixed and now if we put l inform guessed it okay so this works uh, perfectly now we are going to create a side drawer which will uh, display our scoreboard uh, and it will update real time with our points that get updated with each round okay so to do that uh, first we are going to, uh, to the top and over here we need to create something called a global scaffold key so what we are going to do is name it scaffold scaffold key which is equal to global key and it will have a generic type and it will be scaffold state so we have this key so now this key will help us to do various things like open the drawer itself and uh, over here we just have to assign the key variable to this and we'll pass in this to this right so now we have to go to the bottom and over here uh, where we are going to go over here okay over here we, are we need to create a safe area so as I mentioned, safe area it will be this part and a uh, safe area. And over here, we'll have an icon button. Now, what will this icon button be like? A hamburger icon, basically. And we're going to have this icon name, icon, icons.menu. And it will be of the type color. 
colors dot black and after that um an on pressed functionality and yeah this sorry not semicolon this okay so we have this now uh what we want to do when it's pressed okay we have this icon so when this is pressed a drawer should open right so we are, what we are going to do is we are going to make use of the scaffold key we just created scaffold key dot current state not current context current state dot open drawer and this will allow you to open a drawer and see this is a null uh, you know a null, so a null sound safety error so we just have to put this question uh, exclamation mark which will tell that the current state will never be null and therefore this will open a drawer now how will it open a drawer this widget tree doesn't know what a drawer is so we are going to attach a drawer basically over here so what we can do is go on the top and say player drawer and um, we'll need to pass in some arguments but we'll do that later okay so now uh, we'll just create um, in the widgets we can create or we can just create a new folder named sidebar and in the sidebar we'll have player underscore scoreboard underscore drawer we have this over here and we'll create a stateless widget and this stateless widget will be of the name player score and we'll have to import material dot and over here we have to return a drawer and it will uh, have all its elements centered and a uh, center now center should have a container and this container should take all the height so we'll do double dot max finite and it will have a list view builder now this list view builder we are familiar with this now we have used this quite a times and we'll receive some data over here and over here this data will be um so over here we'll have user data so we just need to import that so we'll do final list of map and here we'll receive user data and um so we'll have user data and that index dot values so we have used something similar in the previous like chatting one as well so we are going to do similar things here if you haven't watched that video watch that out so that you'll understand uh, the concept we are going to use so we'll have a title and the title will be data dot element at zero and uh, since uh, user data we are going to line up like this so it will have um, let me multi line comment it so it is the user data is look, going to look something like you know a score and it will have some score and will have some points uh, sorry username and the username will be let's say Rivan. so this is how it's going to look uh, so the title is probably like a data at element 0 is going to be this but I think username is going to be at element 0 so vice versa you get the point so we are going to do style text style and text style we will just do black color and a font size of 23 next we'll add a trailing element and in the trailing element we'll have the similar thing over here going to copy paste it we'll change the element at one 
we'll change the font size to 20 our colors dot we are going to change this to gray and we are going to bold this font weight font weight dot bold okay so we are uh, what are we getting error okay let me remove these comments from here and over here we are just going to have this dot user data and we're going to remove this key thing right now we'll go to the player drawer and we'll have to add this argument over here now to add this argument we will need a score right and this score functionality we will have to add in our app as well so uh, let's do that so what we are going to do is go on the top and over here we will uh, have a list of map and that will be scoreboard so this will be empty in the start we are going to fill it with if fill in it with some values so what we're going to do is um Okay, so to add scoreboard, what we're going to do is in our update room over here, uh, we always receive the points, right? We get the whole room data from here and we have points of each user over here. So uh, what we're going to do is um, below this, first we are going to do scoreboard.clear so that, uh, uh, you know, uh, every time this runs so update a uh, room runs multiple times in this server itself uh, like any word changes then the update room gets uh, called so we'll just clear this so that scoreboard doesn't keep adding all the stuff and now we'll run a for loop we'll run the for loop from zero to room data players dot length and we'll increment that by one and uh, we will traverse like we will iterate over every player object and over there uh, we'll set the state so we'll set state and we'll add to the scoreboard so what we're going to add is scoreboard.add and we're going to add an object and this object um, will be consisting of as i said username and what was the username so room data players right room data players array we have then i the index we are on suppose 0 so 0 1 then 1 then we have a nickname property on every user so nickname then we have points and points is going to be similar to this since every player has their own point and we are going to have points and notice that the points over here is going to be an integer c over here in 32 so we are just going to do points dot to string and like this we have added a scoreboard now we see the error and we pass in scoreboard over here now we just import player drawer as well player score we need to import this i think we have added um, uh, underscores too much but that's fine <laughs> okay so um now after this is done um we'll just save this and see our result so now when i do this valid value in range so let's just run our app again and see if the error still persists 
we're going to create this room hey one two zero one two room size two three and this is performing the hot restart let's wait for it we join uh paste this in and join like that so now we go over here we see not an inclusive range 0 1 and 2 but we're getting a uh, hey and naman over here so um let's um you know go to play a scoreboard and see why this is happening yeah user data index okay so uh i think the problem was that it didn't know the item count right we forgot to do that so we'll do item count and what will be the item item count user data dot link but don't forget that and we see this error is gone but now the problem is if you go over here and do standing you see this is done okay now if we go over here the score hasn't updated right this is because um we haven't sent a request to index.js file over here that we need the updated score and we need to update this so this is exactly what we're going to do now so to do that um uh, we are going to send an update score uh you know a send request an emit request to our server and then we are going to do that we are even going to you know see if this is done let's say um you see over here uh the problem is over here i see if i guess it greedy over here and i again can guess greedy again over here you know so i'll get the points two times and that is unfair right so uh we're going to fix that as well now so uh let's get over here and uh in the index.js file actually after this uh, is sent the guest it part you know over here we are just going to send another to client side to the client we are going to send only one client that close your input so what is this close input going to do i'll tell you so over here in socket dot on close input and over here in close input we are not going to receive anything as such so i'll just mark it as underscore and then uh we are just going to emit our update score so we are just going to first send in update score k okay. so we are going to tell the server that uh calculate the current score uh search it up in your database and give it to me so we are just going to do widget dot data and name over here so we are passing in the room name and over here we are going to create a variable named is text input read only and we are going to mark as mark it as false initially now we are going to take this text input and we are going to set the state we are going to set state to true right and now we are going to take this text input read only so we are going to go to the show dialog part and over here as we are you know changing many values over here not this show dialog actually the show dialog where we are changing the we are resetting we are changing the turns so over here i'll just say is text input read only is equal to false so when the turn changes the user can guess again but when the uh, user has guessed correctly 
that is when uh, you know this runs uh text input read only uh, this close input since over here you can find close input runs only when the user has guessed the word correctly okay so now we're going to go to the uh text field uh so i'll find it by align okay this one where we can write messages and we're going to take this text field and we're going to mark it as read only and we're going to set this to this value and yeah this is pretty much it and over here as you can see this should work pretty well we are not even going to test this we'll test this later on but update score this is the one we have to focus on so we'll just go over here and you know like other stuff we are just going to create socket dot on update score and what is this update score going to receive is uh, a name and we are going to wrap it in a try catch block And we are going to console dot log the error if there is any. And now we are going to find a room. So await room dot find one, and by name we are going to find it. And we are going to emit to the entire room that we have got the update score and pass in the room. So we're going to pass in. So we're going to search up in the database the whole room, and uh, the room will consist of you know the point system that is updated. That is you know the fresh one. <laughs> so uh, this is pretty much it for the update score. And now uh, we need to find update score over here. I actually we don't have to find. We have to create one. Uh, I think we had created one. Yeah, this uh, okay. So over here, uh, if we we have to find update score over here, we haven't created that. So um, let's do it below this socket dot on update score. And this will have room data, and we're going to clear clear off uh, any scoreboard data we have previously. And again, we are going to run for int i is equal to zero. The same thing we did previously. You can just copy paste that. I plus plus, and we are going to set the state. scoreboard dot add it will have username room data Okay, so this is done. Um, so now we can go over here and put a semicolon as well. And I think we are done. So now this should update the score for us. We are going to hot restart the app, and I'll see you when both of these load up and we are in a room. Okay, so we are in a room over here, and now if we see the score is zero over here, also we can see the score is zero. Now we can just type beneficial. Just it. What about beneficial? And now the turns have changed. I can't even guess over here that was done in the previous video. I can still draw. And if you see over here, the score is one eighty two. Now I'll take a bit of time more, and you know, let the time kick off. And uh, uh, let's see if it is managing the scores well enough. Since my score should be less, 
as it's based on time right now let me guess it okay shit parsimonious and i guessed it yeah so we are the point is 57 and this is how it should be and our scores are uh, refreshing in real time as well now if you again uh, guess it good enough it should add up to our current score and this is exactly what it's going to do as well if you see 336 336 and it works perfectly so we are going to work on showing the final score board so uh to do that first we need to realize when do we need to show the final scoreboard right now there are two possibilities when we need to show the final scoreboard where once when uh, you know the maximum number of rounds has been reached so the game needs to end and the second when all the users have disconnected right so le uh, first let's uh, work on you know uh, the when the max number of rounds get over so over here we have a change turn in our index.js file and over here we had already written uh, we need to show the leaderboard over here so we are going to do just that we are going to do io.2 name dot emit show leaderboard and we are going to pass in room dot players because that's what we need to show right the scoreboard so it will just need players and the score now we can just go over here in the pane screen and over here just create another socket listener so over here below sco update score we can write socket dot on show leaderboard and over here we are going to get room players and uh, we are just going to uh, clear the scoreboard first like we did previously and after that uh, we are just going to run that for loop which we did so le let me just copy it from here and paste it down here now um i'll just run it till room players dot length since that uh, this is the array we are going to get room players and uh we are just going to replace all of this with room players okay now after that is done this will be added to the score now we need to put an extra check as well now if so this if condition is used to check uh, who the ultimate winner is whoever has the max number of points right so we are going to do that so we are going to check if max points now what is max points we are going to create a variable up there so let's go on the top and over here create int max points is equal to 0 and uh, when will this max point update exactly when we are going to do over here if max points which is initially 0 is less than in dot pass and we are going to check with scoreboard at i points so if this is the case that means the uh, points that we have for each player if uh, that is less than the max number of points then we need to declare a winner variable right so um we are going to uh, also create a winner variable over here let's do string winner equals this now we'll take this and go down where will we go uh over here winner right winner and who will be the winner this this uh, person who has the maximum number of points right so we are going to do winner is equal to this scoreboard at i and not points scoreboard at i user name since we want the winner's user name so what we are basically doing is we are going to check if the max points is less than the you know each player we are going to traverse over since this for loop is starting from zero we are going to uh, go over the scoreboard array we had previously in the previous video we created and we are going to check their points now if max points is less than them 
then we are going to uh, obviously going to uh, make the winner as this scoreboard at i username but the point is the max points is always going to stay zero right we created that up so we need to modify max points as well so we are going to do that int dot pass so basically we are going to just copy this and now this will work so we are updating max points value as well. So if, uh, so if, uh, in the start, if we have two players, uh, so let's, let me just draw some comments to explain it. So if we have two, uh, players over here, uh, so, uh, there are two objects as well. So there are points and points will be 120 and, um, username, username will be let's say Rivan and I have another uh, object that is another uh, another user right and let me just name it player B with a point of 40 so what this basically does is uh, it checks max points is less than scoreboard at i scoreboard at i so initially we have zero so it will go with this and it will take this points and it will take this now it will convert it to int uh, so that you know uh, it doesn't need it to be converted to int since points over here is of the type int 32 you can just go over here and see points is, uh, uh, and it will come over here if you click over here points over here in 32 so I'm just doing it so that I get uh, you know auto completion because flutter knows the type now if zero is less than 120 right it is less than 120 so the winner will be Rivan and the max points will change to 120 then this for loop will run again then we have max points 120 it's 120 less than 40 the second uh, scoreboard uh, object we have no right so uh, the winner will not, uh, this will this uh, block will not get affected right and thus our winner will result in Rivan I hope uh, I made that clear. Now, after this is done, uh, what we're going to do is after this for loop, uh, we are just going to set the state. Now we have sh uh, shown the, uh, you know, uh, the leaderboard. So what all we do, we need to do. So we need to just cancel the timer. And we need to tell the widget tree as well that uh, now we need to show the leaderboard and get all the playing stuff out. So we are going to create a variable for that and it is going to be of the type boolean and it will be a show final leaderboard and I'll turn that to false. Now we'll just go down again. I'll remove these common and over here I'll just set it to true. Now we need to show the leaderboard. Cool. Now uh, we need to display the UI as well. Now UI will be similar to uh, this uh, scoreboard drawer we had created. Not exactly the same because we are returning a drawer uh, ultimately over here. But uh, we are going to make some modifications in that. But before that we are just going to do this. Is show final leaderboard. Now if is show final leaderboard is true then this will do. But we don't want that. If the leader uh, board, if we don't want to show the leader board, we'll just change this to false and then do that. And now we'll go to the bottom over here somewhere. Uh, where are we getting this error? Over here. Okay, so um, below this waiting lobby screen, I think we can do. No. Let's do it over here. Over here, we'll just do final uh, leaderboard. And what do we need to pass in? Obviously, the scoreboard. Now I'll create that um, screen final underscore leaderboard dot dot now we'll do stateless widget we'll call it final 
lead uh, goal. And now over here, we are just going to import the material package. And over here, we are just going to return a center aligned widget. So we are just going to do child container. And um, uh, we are going to add some padding of let's say 8 we'll add and uh, we are going to add a height of whatever, uh, whatever available height we have max finite. Now we'll do child and we'll have a column over here. And what will the column consist of? But over here, uh, we need to even, you know, scoreboard we need. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll do final score board. And we'll just do this dot score board. Okay, after having this, um, we are just going to return a list view builder. Uh, sorry, we'll have children over here actually. And children will be list view dot builder. And uh, similar to what we did previously, let me just go over there actually and copy all of that stuff. We'll have this list view dot builder. I'll copy this from here and paste it over here. What will be the item count? Scoreboard dot length. And what will be data? Scoreboard at index dot values. Okay. And uh, um, we'll also add primary to true. Uh, yeah, primary to true and shrink wrap to true as we did previously for other list view builders as well. Okay, now that we have this, we shouldn't be getting any error. Let me just remove these warnings. Okay, so now we have this. Uh, I think we're good to go. Uh, we just need to import this final leaderboard. Uh, what did I name this over here? Final leaderboard. And I'll import this library over here. Yeah. I think this must show that. So now, uh, we'll check our index.js logic again. This seems to be working. Now let's, uh, you know, refresh and reload our app and see you when both of these things happen. So welcome back guys, uh, I've created a maximum round capacity of two and I'll do that. We'll complete the game as well. I've guessed the word. The word was faithful. Faint. Okay. Okay. After guessing all of this, I think this is the last round. And here we see our leaderboard. Looks pretty cool. And uh, now I just want some one modification over here. Uh, let's go to our uh, final leaderboard. And over here, uh, we have created a column, right? Now in a column, we need to finally display who has won the game and we have that data. So we'll just do text that uh, and we'll receive that text over here. Final string winner. And we're going to need that winner over here. Now text winner has won the game. And we'll have a style of text style of color. And we'll turn that to black. 
and we'll have a font weight of font weight dot bold and we'll have a font size of 30. I think this would look pretty good. Uh, we missing one yeah, parenthesis. Now after this is done, we even need to pass in the winner. And yeah, this is pretty much it. And we see this is giving us the option correctly. Rivan has won the game. But uh, this isn't looking very good. Uh, I would like some padding as well so that it looks very cool. I'll do that as well. I'll wrap it with padding. And uh, let's give it an 8 padding. I think this would look pretty cool. You can just play around with the values. I'm not very sure. Yeah, let's give it 10. Vo you won't see any difference, but if you try any other name or something, you'll just see the difference as well. So yeah, this is the uh, final leaderboard for this. Now, uh, when the user disconnects, we need to work on that. So uh, to do that, we need to check in the index.js in our server file. I'll go to the bottom. And over here, we need to check if socket dot on disconnect we have that uh, disconnect file like uh, you know connection over here we have socket on disconnect this will check if uh, the any user had disconnected so it will check and it will not give us any uh, parameter as such at least not what we need and uh, we'll get some error as well we just console log that And now over here, we are going to create a, uh, we'll find a room. Now, how will we find a room, right? Because um, we don't even have the room name. Uh, so what we can do over here is we can find a player. Uh, we can find a room by its player. Suppose we go up on the top and we see over here, we had something called as socket.id, right? Now we can find a, 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 a player's room by its socket ID. If you go over here, you'll find that each player has their own socket IDs. So we'll do that. Now what, how to go in this player's array and socket ID, right? We can just do it by players dot socket ID. Make sure you've typed this correctly. And yeah, we'll just pass in the socket ID. So with this, we are going in the player's array and we are finding the socket ID. We don't need to traverse and, you know, uh, find every player object. There's no need of that. Now, after that is done, uh, we'll just run a for loop. For let i equal to zero. i is less than room dot players dot length. And, uh, if room dot players at i so uh, we got the zeroth uh, so with this so basically with this we have gotten our room and now if uh, now we go in our players array over here and um, we check if the uh, zeroth index player which is this object if that is um uh, if uh, their socket id is equal to the socket id that we have over here socket dot id so uh, we've gotten that socket id with this and we'll check if that is equal to the socket dot id so what does this mean if this socket id over here is equal to the socket ID that we have over here. That means the user has disconnected. So what we want to do, we just need to remove the players from the array that we have. How will we do that? Room dot players, room dot players dot splice. And with splice, you can remove or, uh, you know, uh, add any element uh, in JavaScript. And then we'll just break since we know the socket IDs are very unique, uh, no two players will have the same socket ID. So we'll just break. And now we'll just do room is equal to await room dot save. 
and now we'll do an extra check. So with this we have just removed the player socket ID. But now we want to end the game as well, right? If the players consist of uh, only one uh, member, so there's no one to play with. So we'll just do if room dot players dot length is equal equal to one. That means only one uh, player exists in this player's array over here. What should we do? So we just need to do socket dot broadcast dot two. So what this will do is basically it will send all the uh, it will send the message to all the other clients except the client that we have over here. So it will send uh, to everyone except this client itself. Okay. So we'll do socket dot broadcast dot two and we'll pass in the room name and we'll emit that we need to show the leaderboard, right? And we'll pass in room dot players here as well. Else, what we want to do is we need to take this only. Uh, and over here, we need to broadcast to that the user has disconnected. And we'll pass in the whole room object. So what have we done over here? We are checking if the room player's length is equal to one. That means only one uh, user is there in the room. Then we uh, emit uh, to everyone except the client itself uh, that uh, uh, we need to show the leaderboard. Else what we want to do is, uh, well, uh, we have to disconnect the user from the game. And you know, uh, if you want, you can tell other users as well that a player has left. But we'll just show that in our uh, leaderboard in the side over here we get. Cool. Now we'll go to our paint screen again and um, we need to find our way to the top where we can just listen to all of that. So over here I'll only do socket um, underscore socket dot on user disconnected and we'll receive some data that data uh, so whenever any user disconnects you can add as a functionality in your app that you want to tell in the chat that one user has left but I'm not going to do that it's up to you uh, we'll just update the scoreboard and we'll show that one user has left right so we'll just do scoreboard dot clear and uh, well what we did before exactly that we are going to do. We'll copy not this. We'll copy this for loop from here. We'll just go over here for int i. Yeah. And over here uh, we need to replace room data with data. Cool. And this is pretty much it. Now let's see our app. Uh, let me reload uh, from both the sides and see you when both of these load up. Hey guys, welcome back. So uh, we have created a room. You can see the scoreboard. These are the two players. This is the device Ravan the boy and this is the device Ravan the girl. And um, I'll just go on the tab and exit from here. And as you can see, there's, there was only one player left. And uh, the squad, it shows us the leaderboard. And no one has won really. This is because you know the score is zero. Both of them had zero, so there was no winner as such. You can implement the feature for Rivan the boy to be the winner if there's only one player in the game. So this is pretty much it for this, uh, uh you know the uh, leaderboard part. Now uh, I have some changes to make as well. Stay around for uh, some time. Uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, they're not big changes as such. I mean, they are for an app, but it won't affect the gameplay of the app at such a level. So we have to add a dispose method over here. Now, what will this dispose method be? Well, to dispose of uh, whatever you have like socket, we need to dispose that off so that it doesn't cause any memory leaks in the app, right? We won't, don't want that and we need the timer, timer to cancel. We don't want our timer to keep running and running. So we just do cancel as well. Cool. 
and uh we, we forgot to add one thing in our previous videos and that is when this happens we don't have a listener for not correct game over here so we just need to take that and well uh where will we go mm, let's put it on the top not on the top let's put it over here over here we'll put socket dot on not correct game and uh we'll receive some data obviously but um what we want to do is we want to navigate to the other page and we'll just navigate dot off context and we'll do push and remove until and we'll pass in the material page route and um this will be the builder and context and we'll just pass in the home screen over here we just need to go to the home screen after this happens and we just need to paste that and uh we need to import this home screen over here yeah and this is pretty much it i'll just format the document yeah and uh this will uh so if there is no uh like we join another room that already exists so it will just throw us to the home screen so that we can't join it uh we forgot to implement this in our previous video so we just did that and with this uh we have come to an end to this video and the series as well thank you guys so much for sticking around uh, uh till the end uh if you have any errors or anything just let me know in the comment section and also uh, there might be some functionalities you might uh, want to add and you can feel free to do uh, you can feel free to do so and uh, let me know and send the github link uh, in the comment section or on my instagram profile i would love to see them uh, and yeah this is pretty much it see you with the next video